Good day. Good day. Good morning. Today is Friday, January 5th, 2024. I will be the moderator for this class. Class, you have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during classes, not to disturb the speaker. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada. United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, with students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of the physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each lord must have a name, and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. 
This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name mm -hmm. given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escaped the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually is. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. We will begin this morning with a prayer by Dr. Teresa Baker. We will have a song by Dr. Carlton Gordon, if he's here. If not, uh, Dr. Jackie McCain will give us the song. Our scripture lesson is 2 Timothy, the third chapter, to be read by Dr. Lenore Allen. And our readers for the session are Dr. Jackie McCain and Dr. Deborah Van Hook. And we will continue with the second reading of our transcript of Dr. Kinley's last lecture. May we have our prayer, Dr. Baker? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, uh, brethren. Father, we come to, before you with humble hearts so that we may learn of your purpose, plan, and 
salvation in this present kingdom age. Father, we ask as we go into this transcript today that we gain a more perfect knowledge as we can in this physical existence we're living in right now. Father, we just want to thank you for sending your son into the world to be the savior of the world. Father, we thank you for the seventh aim, to discern and avoid being deceived. Father, we thank you for that discernment because it comes from you and it comes from within. Father, we appreciate you and thank you for all the things you have done for us for the things that you do for us and the things that you will do for us. All these blessings we are thankful for and grateful for in the precious name of Yahshua the Messiah. May we all say, Hallelujah. 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 Beautiful praise. Praise Yahshua. Good morning, brethren. Yahshua states in John 6:63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Yeshua, our Savior, one gives to all. Wonderful words of life. Sinners list to the loving call. Wonderful words of life. All so freely given. Loving Yahshua forever. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. Beautiful words. Wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life. Yahshua, only Savior. Sanctified forever. Beautiful words. Wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Praise Yahshua for those words. Praise Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Good morning. This morning, I'm going to be reading 2 Timothy, the third chapter from the Holy Name Bible. 2 Timothy 3, know this also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, true speakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despises of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, love of pleasures more than lovers of Yahweh, having a form of the worship of Yahweh, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with various lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
Now as Janies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutors I endured, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all Yahweh delivered me. Yea, and all that will live in fear of Yahweh shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of what thou hast knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is Yahshua the messiah all the scripture that is given by the inspiration of yahweh is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of yahweh may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That was 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. We thank everyone for their participation. And I will now turn this back over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see you all here today on this beautiful, bright, sunny Friday morning. Um, I wanted to give an opportunity to Dr. Frank Lewis of Springfield, Ohio, who has been um, of watching and learning, and he wanted, there were some things that he thought that we should um, get, some things that we overlooked, and he would like to share that with us. I turn this over to Dr. Frank Lewis of Springfield, Ohio. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, well, um, this last, uh, well, this scripture lesson is uh, what Dr. Kinley is going to go into in this lecture. Um, this lecture is Dr. Kinley's last lecture that we've been reading. And uh, December 21st, 1975. And it's the seventh o'clock class. Back then they had classes twice on Sunday. I think it's a Sunday, uh, or anyway, they, they had class twice and, uh, and you'll read that, uh, we read that he went to sleep a little bit that morning. Uh, but, uh, uh, he said that he didn't reason he went to sleep, uh, because he didn't get much sleep that night. Uh, he was very sick and he's going to, and he took off the flesh February 9th, 1976. You can see how close that is from when he took his last breath there. And so one of the things that, that we were reading yesterday, which I think is important, and sometimes people don't quote it exactly, is uh, he talked about there's a couple of things he wanted to say to people. And uh, the first thing is what we repeat many times, and you all ought to read that. It says, uh, one of the things that I want to say to you is this. And he says, be constant and regular in your attendance. Mm -hmm. In Try school. To learn all that you can possibly learn. Try to now learn. He said, hold on. He says, mm -hmm. try to learn all that you possibly, all you can possibly learn. Now mm -hmm. you see, and so the thing is, uh, there's a lot that you can learn. There's people that say there's nothing you can do. You understand? And all kind mm -hmm. of stuff people say, but that ain't the way he taught it. He's telling people, you come to school, uh, you be, uh, be constant and regular in your attendance in school. Try to learn all that you can possibly learn. Try to understand all that you can possibly understand now that's a lot you know we could understand a lot of things couldn't we 
Now that's why it's a school of research. Mm -hmm. You should be checking these things out. See, it says because you need it. Mm -hmm. See, and some of those people that he said it to, they definitely needed it because they done caught away with some crazy stuff. You need it to keep you steadfast, strong, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not be removed from the faith. Mm -hmm. Now, it says the scripture says. Now, I want you to read second, uh, uh, read chapter. the third chapter. I believe it's of Timothy, either first or second Timothy. Now, that's what we just read. And mm -hmm. what he wanted them to read was second Timothy, the third chapter, first verse. Mm -hmm. Because, and that's what he's going to go into in the lecture later on. Because mm -hmm. it says, uh, what did it say there? Uh, know this then perilous times. yeah perilous times shall come mm -hmm. and uh do we know anything about that now oh he yes, yes. That, you know the holy spirit said that way back there and and it says the latter days doesn't it uh that in the latter days perilous times shall come no in the last, the last days. days are we in the last days Yes, sir. <laughs> See, it's the last days of this, uh, and and it's the last day. And when he said it, it's the last days of the age, because it was in the fifth and sixth dispensation, and a thousand a day with Yahweh is a thousand years. So, and he's going to go into that later on. So, uh, uh, so he, he talks, and then he talks about. Uh, Come to school, be punctual, do all that you can toward getting somebody else to come. Somebody that don't know, your family, those members of your family that don't know, try to get them to come. Be patient with them. Be very careful with them and try to persuade them to come. Now, you know, they didn't tell me that when I come to school because I was crazy telling people stuff. And I didn't even know a whole lot myself, but I was real zealous and trying to get people to come. And I wasn't as careful and uh, patient as I should have been. You mm -hmm. understand? I mean, so we've all made mistakes up yes. around in this school. You understand? Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, these are the things he's telling them. And I wish I would have known that <laughs> when I first come into school. It would have helped me a whole lot. <laughs> but we all have to grow and uh, we all make errors and mistakes then he talks about how that those people are saying that the world's going to end in 1975 and that uh, and there are all kind of churches were saying that back in and he told them no that ain't going to happen well I don't think he knows what he understands if he really talk, if he knows what he, he he's just telling what he thinks he said well it ain't happened yet has it <laughs> and we're down here and it hadn't happened as it uh, mm -hmm. and so uh, he did tell him about he put out the book in 1961 which is the first it was called God the Archetype Original Pattern of the Universe and it did have the name Yahweh in it and, it, and he said that's what and he says uh, there's books now that are coming out with the name Yahweh and and matter of fact the, the element or the book that he sent out uh, the first one in 1961. Well, it's 1963 when the Holy Name Bible was finished. And, and it's in these lectures. It's 1966 when the New Jerusalem Bible, they that's the Roman Catholic Church, imprimatured it and put Yahweh back. They had God still and had Jesus, but they did put Yahweh there. And so, and he told, he said the Jehovah Witnesses wasn't saying Yahweh before then until the work was sent out and then uh and and then he started talking about the preachers how that they know that the name yahweh but they done got a big following and they just refuse to use the true names you understand and uh and 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 that these are things at the end of the and we know something about that. And matter of fact, if you remember back when I remember when I first come to when I got the names, I'd be kind of ashamed of it to myself because I didn't understand. 
you're, you're afraid of what people think will think about you, whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but uh, they need to know everybody's got to come the same way. Uh, they think that they're worshiping the creator, but if you don't use the correct name, uh, uh, you're not worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Okay, so he talked about using the true names, and so that is vitally important. You have to preach in the true name of Yahweh and the divine, divine title of Elohim and the true name of Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, he also talked, and we and you all got into it yesterday. He talked about it uh, that Matthew 24 chapter is just as important as anything else in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, uh, and now if you're not, if you're not going to believe that, you might as well throw the whole business, <laughs> throw away the whole business. <laughs> and, uh, and then he said that he's the only man and he's been teaching for 44 years. And he says, I'm the only man. Uh, now why does he say that? Because by the dispensation and ages, and that's why those charts are so important. But uh, and he did talk about uh, when he's preached. Well, I guess we. Well, uh, so he talked about that he's only. Why is that? Because you're at the end of an age, uh, the end of the post -Lupian, the anti Lupian age. Noah was sent. Uh, and he was the only man, right, that Yahweh Elohim gave a vision to. And told him that it was going to rain. It was going to rain, and that the world would be destroyed. See, and when Yahshua the Messiah come at the end of the post diluvian age, was he the only man? <laughs> yeah, it was. That's that. He is the only man. Period. <laughs> but he came in a physical body at the end of an age to close that age out. See, so if Yahweh's repeating it and he goes by a pattern, what's going to happen? No. Uh -uh. What's going to happen at the end of this age when he says he's the only man? <laughs> Yahweh got to send somebody with the truth. Right. Uh, you've seen it happen with Noah, and it's in the Bible. As a matter of fact, you ought to get that one thing. Uh, read Matthew, keep this, and read Matthew 24 and uh, about 36 or 37, something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you might as well read Matthew 24, 14, because he was talking about that. And he said, you're the people later on. We read that yesterday. Yep. Now, that was the people in 75. Well, who's the people now? <laughs> you're the people. Read. Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Now you see it says, and this gospel. And you know the holy name took out this? <laughs> uh, but uh, no, the gift, this gospel means the gospel Yahshua Messiah is teaching and about himself, how he's going to die, bury, resurrect, ascend, and pour out the Holy Spirit according to the scriptures. See, that's the gospel. See, and uh, it says, and this gospel, the kingdom shall, see, it's of the kingdom. And that's what you want to, you see, you see where this four, it says in this gospel of the kingdom, he's saying that in the post diluvian age. And when he pours out the Holy Spirit, look what the age is called, present kingdom age. You see how it says this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. And then the next thing he's got is spiritual kingdom on earth. And he's got Colossians, you know, one and uh, 13 that he have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son see and so now it's a kingdom on earth with the holy spirit poured out but now what's coming up if you receive the holy spirit in this age you're going to be, be what you're going to be you're going to come into the kingdom of immortality with an immortal glorified body and be one of his angels throughout eternity so there ain't nothing worth losing that over is it See how great and important the gospel is. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be, that's the good news of the kingdom. Of the, uh, 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 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. It says shall. So that means it had to, <laughs> had to wait till the Holy Spirit poured out. Shall be preached in, the in all the world for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. 
And so he talked about having the three ecclesiastical peace missions. Now he done had two and they're getting ready for the third one. And he said, he said, now you need to, uh, you should give to a Hertz. Mm -hmm. If you really believe in this teaching, they say, well, why, why should we go out there? Uh, why should we, uh, we've already been twice. Why should we go for the third time? He said, didn't the high priest go into the most holy place on the third trip? And look where we look where, you know, see, if you do everything by a pattern, see, or with it, which it is a pattern, that the antediluvian age was the first age of time from Adam to Noah, uh, the flood, and then the post Luvians after the flood, and then clear down to Yahshua the Messiah and, and his death, burial, resurrection, uh, ascension. And when he pours out the Holy Spirit, now we're down in this age. Well, that'd be like uh, the anti-Luvian age would be like the court roundabout. The post-Luvian age would be like the uh, holy place. And then here in this age is the most holy place. So didn't the high priest go three times into the most holy place on the Day of Atonement? Well, he had three ecclesiastical peace missions at the end. You see that? And so... Uh, uh, and that's this gospel of the kingdom shall be preaching all the world for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Now, so you can look at that. Uh, now, one way he used to say that is throughout all this age, ever since the Holy Spirit, you got to preach it to the end of the age. See, and then, and uh, as a matter of fact, when you go to the elementary chart, uh, that uh uh, when you see that angel there on the day of Pentecost, uh, right above the, uh, uh, if you look right, if you look at that angel, he's got a scroll in his hand. And one of them scroll, one of those scriptures there is Matthew 24, 14 through 15. You barely read it, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> and another one is Revelation 14 and 6. You ought to read that. And another one is, I believe, is second, uh, uh, no, yeah, second John, about the seventh verse there. Uh, read the Revelation 4. Well, so he says, you preach in all the world unto all nations, then shall they, that means it's spread throughout the world. Then shall the end come. And Dr. Kenny used to say, well, Lord God, Jesus Christ, been all around the world. Is the end come yet? No. Just about everywhere you go, somebody knows something about it. Lord God, Jesus. They don't know about Yahweh and Yahshua yet, do they? Still got people learning about it. See? And then uh, and, and then also it's got to preach unto all nations. Well, you can take it. You can bring it to yourself. <laughs> it's got it. You had imagination, condemnation, hallucinations, indignation, abomination. You had a lot of nations up in your mind. Uh, damnation. You had a lot of nations there that that had to be, those things had to be cast out uh, by the preaching of the gospel so that you could receive the Holy Spirit. Then the end shall come, the end of your carnality. And you can receive the Holy Spirit when you believe this. And then when it says, then for, there, then says, uh, and you shall see the, abomination desolation spoke of by daniel prophet stand in the holy place well that's how you get in the holy places to a death burial resurrection or blood water spirit and that's another thing he talked about yesterday i believe mm -hmm. is that they they were saying that uh, you got to get away from blood water spirit and matter of fact that was said by the international dean before he took off the flesh that that was out <laughs> he didn't realize that uh, we're talking about the one that took Dr. Kinley's place. Uh, and, and Dr. Kinley said, I'm going to tell you how stupid that is. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> he said, he said, uh, Yahweh is spirit. Now, how are you going to get away from him? And on top of that, they look at the pattern. They look at the pattern, the tabernacle pattern, and think that blood, water, spirit is just a court roundabout principle. Well, you're wrong there because uh, one of the ways you're wrong about it is that, uh, uh, well, look at your physical body. Isn't your body a tabernacle? Does blood only stay around in your stomach region? 
No, you got a heartbeat, you know, pumping it. You got an aorta that pumps it. That's in the holy place. Then you got it up in your brain with the arterial circle willis. Isn't that the blood going all the way through from top to bottom? That means it has to be preached all the way to the end of the age. You understand? And then water too. You ever had you ever had sweat on your face on a hot day? <laughs> you understand? Is that water? And, and, and on the rest of your body sweating from your court roundabout, your feet to your uh, head to toe, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Is that water going just stopping in the in the bottom portion, court roundabout? Hmm. Yeah. No. And so, and then you know the spirit works throughout your entire body, keeping you alive. And then somebody gonna say, We gotta get away. You never did know nothing about blood, water, spirit till you come down to school, and now all of a sudden you gotta get away from it because you're smarter now. No, and that stuff still goes on. People still preach that stupidness. And uh, uh, and he talks about how people get carried away with people and so on. And they do. They worship people. Mm -hmm. And it don't make no sense. You got the... Uh, uh, I have Revelations 14 and 6 if you want to. Yeah, yeah. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Yeah, so you see that angel got a scroll there because he's pouring out the Holy Spirit and there's a message. Now that's the beginning of the age, that message that I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven. He's in the midst. Now isn't the Holy Spirit supposed to be in the midst of you, in your yeah. heart and mind? <laughs> Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. You see how it takes you through to eternity? That's how important it is. And got some fools saying, uh, 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 that's what we first believe we come to class. Gospel ain't saved nobody. I've heard that stupidness. You understand? You're a liar and a hypocrite. See, and they say, why are you calling people liars? Well, did Joshua call people liars and hypocrites at the, at the end of that age? Then what do you think it's got to be down here if it's the same Holy Spirit? You're going to say they're liars and hypocrites. And we're not against people, but we are against doctrine taught to them. Read on. I didn't finish. I'm sorry, doctor. I, yeah, go I ahead. Didn't finish. I, know. I just saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and That's to every right. nation and kindred and tongue and people. See how it says every nation, kindred, don't you see how it's for everybody? Read. Saying with a loud voice, fear Yahweh and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And, and did you know you've been in the judgment since the day of Pentecost? That's another thing we teach. A lot of people don't teach, too. They don't understand anything about judgment. It's terrible. Read. His judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. And, and that's Yahweh that made everything. And he got every he got his name on it. Trees branch off the letter Y. Your veins and arteries branch off the letter Y. Your nerve fibers, bird feather, bird foot, all the roots of a tree. You understand? The lightning flash across the sky make the letter Y. All these are witnesses that Yahweh made it. And he's got in your breath, Yahweh. Hey, then you get ready to sneeze, you go, oh, sure. <laughs> you say Yahshua, and they say bless you. They don't, but they're going to still talk about Jesus. You understand? Don't realize that's the blessed name. They took it out of the Bible, they can't take it out of you. These are things we've learned. Uh, the creator, he, the creation testifies to him. Read on. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her. Family. Now that was a prophecy. Uh, and the Babylon, the great city in our time is the Vatican. And that's before, John saw this before. And it was this teaching that tore that stupidness down. Had them, I mean, you had, <laughs> look, 
Dr. Kinley wrote that book and put and sent it to the Pope in October 1961 and showed him that uh, that crown he was wearing, Vicarious Philidia, put the Roman numerals to it, showed 666. He didn't wear that hat no more. Then he told him that that seat of Gastoria you're sitting on, that's representing the throne of Yahweh in the most holy place, the Ark of the Covenant, and you ain't even supposed to touch it. And he's sitting on it. He quit riding around on that. Then he told him that you you won't live to see June 6, 1963. And the man died June 3rd, 1963. In other words, prophesied that he would, he had to go. And you understand, and Dr. Kinley said, why did I say that? He wouldn't live to see June 6th. Because Pharaoh didn't live to see June 6th. When he cast into the Red Sea in April. Then you got uh, Judas. He didn't see June 6th. They're all representing the satanic spirit in a man. See? Uh, the beast man of sin. See, uh, read on there. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. And Babylon she... means confusion. And this teaching, he said, he said the Roman Catholic Church or Babylon's uh, fallen flatter than a fritter. And you know, a fritter is like a pancake. You understand? That's pretty flat, ain't it? Read. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. See, they're out there drinking false doctrine, wrath of her fornication. You're over there having a relationship with something other than the Holy Spirit. See, read. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of Yahweh. Which is yeah. Now you see that? And it says without mixture, right? It? You understand? You receive that the mark in your forehead and your hand. You're going to receive the wrath of Yahweh without mixture. That means he's not going to dilute his damnation on you after you've been told the truth about the thing. You understand? And on top of that, See, people look, and you know how carnal-minded people are? Because it, it, it'll say there in Revelation 13 chapter earlier in that, that they might not buy or sell, say they have the mark of the beast and the number of his name. And, 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 and they'll think, oh, uh, in their forehead and in their hand, oh, they're going to put a computer chip in your forehead and in your hand, and you can't buy nothing. It ain't talking about that. It's a holy spirit. <laughs> In, Re in, Revel in Romans 16, 17, it says, uh, oh, we can't, I don't know. We got to get back to the lecture. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But uh, these are important things, though. Um, but anyway, uh, we got to get back to the lecture. I can't go off on that. But the thing is, they might not buy or sell that he at the mark of the beast. They're selling you false doctrine. You're buying it in your forehead and with your hand. You're over there worshiping by putting money in the plate and eating the Lord's Supper and all kind of other stuff with your hands. Worshiping Yahweh with your hands when he told you he ain't worshiping with man's hands as though he needeth anything. See, uh, well, okay. Uh, well, she's got it on there. Romans 16, 17. I beseech you, brethren, mark them that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For they serve not our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, but their own belly. They have their own appetite for things. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. See, you're being marked when you preach false doctrine. And see, that's what happened. People come into the school and start preaching. It, and Dr. Kinley talked about that, that they're going to tell you that they're going to come out i think we read that yesterday we've read it sometime that they're going to come up been around the school a long time and going to come up and and say things out of the clear blue sky against the things that you've been taught and we seen it you understand yep and uh it's going on you understand and and, and people follow it because uh, because the international dean said it there uh, 
And so, well, a matter of fact, that well, yeah, we did read that yesterday. Mm -hmm. See, uh, uh, and then he talked about getting off blood, water, spirit. He said, Yahweh's spirit. You see how stupid that is? <laughs> how you going to get away from Yahweh when he's spirit? You understand? It's within him that you live, move, and have your being. See? Uh, and so, uh, oh, second chapter of Hebrews there. He talked about that. Mm -hmm. Two and one. And he hooked it up with, yeah, you better read that. Read it through the third verse because he talked about all three of them or had it read. Read on. Jackie, can you read that? Huh? Can you Hebrews read 2 and 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, least at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by Yahshua and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Now you see that? So he says, uh, he's telling them back there, we ought to take the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. And people took these things that were uh, they're in the Elohim book and the transcripts and in the Bible and they and, and in the creation and all the witnesses we've got, and they've let them things slip and think that the stupid stuff that somebody's telling them because they've got big positions, that uh, that's better than what the Holy Spirit said <laughs> through the through the man that was sent at the end of this age. You ain't gonna get no better than what the Holy Spirit said. Yeah. For the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense reward. Those angels that went against, rebelled against Yahweh, they were cast out never to return. And then they had the nerve to say all the angels sinned and all of them were created to be destroyed. That's so stupid, it's ridiculous, but they believe that. Then says, now how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? See, and that's, that, so that's the examination you have to do, which at the first began to be spoken by Yahshua and was confirmed by us that heard him. And the Holy Spirit still continuing on. See, and that's who's speaking to those Hebrews there. But now what he, Dr. Kinley did, and he did a few lectures and he did it in this lecture. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, we ought to take the more earnest heed to the things we heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. And then he says, and then a root of bitterness springing up uh, mm -hmm. uh, trouble, trouble you. Thereby See, to be defined. And that's, and, and you know, that happens. Uh, you know, people, are, he told people to come to class. Then all of a sudden, people got, uh, something happens, and all of a sudden, you don't go to class no more. And then you blame other people for it. That's a root of bitterness sprung up. Mm -hmm. And also about doctrine. See, now where that is, is Hebrews 12 and 14 and 15 there, or 15 there. And it's at the end of it. Uh, so he's, so it's something else how he hooks up to, we ought to take the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. And then over there in the 15th, 12, 15, that's 10 chapters away there. <laughs> and halfway down. <laughs> Read that. Hebrews 12, 15. Oh, Looking by, in the 14th verse, he's talking to the Hebrews. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness without no man can see Yahshua or Yahweh. Now, why is he saying that? Because the Hebrews were thinking the Gentiles were heathens and and they just they ain't worthy. They, we're the chosen people. And these, these guys, and that's why the Holy Spirit's tell them, no, you follow peace with all men because Yahshua Messiah died for all. And, and they, they won't see nothing because you're the one giving the scripture. You're the one supposed to teach them, help them out. You understand? But they want to say, think they're better. And no, no, I ain't dealing with no Gentile. And they was mad at Peter when he went there. But he was sent by the Holy Spirit to go down there and preach. 
And then Paul, he had to end up just going, being a preacher to the Gentiles because they had a, you know, matter of fact, that 15th chapter of Acts, that's what it talks about. You might got it. I can't remember. We, or we read that in another, in the Elohim book. See, they wanted to circumcise them, to make them proselytes after the Holy Spirit's been poured out. <clears throat> and so they had to straighten them out on that. Okay, get the 15th verse there. Says looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of Yahweh. You see, you got to be diligent about this thing. Mm -hmm. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. See, then we done seen you know that root of bitterness, and it's hard when you got bitterness to, to try to talk to people. You understand? See, and then he talks about Esau who sold his uh, birthright for. Uh, uh, a morsel of food there see and and that's what you don't want to do is sell out uh the truth for something else you understand so these are things that he covered yesterday and uh uh and he just says so much it's it's unbelievable i mean well, it's not unbelievable it's believable but uh <laughs> and then he talks about when he wrote something it was just so they wanted, they, we want something to show how great our school is. And he wrote it so much. He wrote it and it was such a big writing. They, they didn't understand it. Then he broke it down again and, and they, they still didn't understand it. Then went over to Wittenberg and that guy wanted to meet Dr. Kinley. And I want to meet this sixth grade scholar that wrote these high, highly intelligent, you know, these words. Uh, and he had these big words and then Dr. Kinley when he met him he spoke in them big words that guy goes yeah he's sure an intelligent man well educated he was educated by the Holy Spirit <laughs> the Holy and then he talked about prophesying of the Korean War and see they didn't think that would happen and then he talks about how he prophesied and told the, he told them what was going to happen in war war uh, two, and he says back in we only had one chart. That chart was the elementary chart. He said that in that lecture. I don't know if you remember. There's a lot of stuff he talks about. Mm -hmm. See, and then but they thought that there couldn't be no war. America couldn't. They just got through being in World War Two. Now you're going. They're going to go to a war in Korea. Yeah. And he prophesied. He said, and they said, well, how'd you know there wasn't? He said, well, I got a question for you. How you know there wasn't going to be one? <laughs> 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 so and then they had a little ride up in the uh in the, in the springfield uh what was it uh daily news sun sun and it said uh uh, uh biblical order claims to possess knowledge how to forecast war that's what he said they said mm -hmm. and they did say something like that uh uh <clears throat> You know, he's just giving witness to it there. And I think that's where we kind of ended up at, wasn't it? Right. Uh, and so he's talking about, you know, and that blood, and that's one of the first things we learned on that elementary chart is how to preach uh, the gospel uh, with the blood, water, spirit, 40 all the way through all the Bible stories going by a pattern and showing the death, burial, resurrection, ascension. All that's by that, by, by that tabernacle pattern. That's the true gospel being preached. See, uh, okay, uh, let's continue on then, please. I just wanted to kind of review some of that stuff. Thank you, Dr. Allen. May I add one important part of what you were saying and add to you and thank you for what you stated? Dr. Kinley encouraged us to be in regular attendance and on time, but to really be there, just not in the building, but be there in your heart and mind. Thank you. Okay. Jackie, are you continuing to read from your part or? Your I can if you want me to. Okay. okay. Now, the reason why I brought all this up is because, you see, you have been with me some for many, many years. And being with me for many, many years, 
you've seen a lot of things happen just like that, that I have told you about, see, through the years. Now listen closely at what I'm telling you. As Dr. Trainum said, well, said this morning that he saw, see now they're asleep. They're pretty wise. They are, you just continue to come, study, and then accept what you read. Yeah, accept what you read. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to fix it. Just leave it alone. Now there is mistranslations and misinterpolations in your Bible. We fix them, see? Now, are you following me closely in what I'm saying to you? Now that was a war that was in Korea. I asked you the question, was there a war in Korea? Audience, yes. Yes. You didn't know me at that time. Now in the second world war before that time on a Thursday night, I told them we didn't have but one chart. That's this one right here. This is the only one we had. The rest of them we didn't have in Springfield, Ohio. I told them about the Second World War, and I told them everything about it. The nations, which nations, and that one and the other would go to war. When the war and all would be terminated, yeah, the nations involved and in everything. And am I lying, Dr. Gross? No. Well, when that war broke out, now I'm in Cincinnati. Now, sitting up in Cincinnati in my office, working for Wright Aeronautics Corporation, and there came an announcement on the public address system, shut the whole shop down. Nobody did work, just sat down. That would be an announcement from the White House on the public address system. Truman would be announcing the end of the hospitality, excuse me, Truman would be announcing the end of hostility and the document was signed at sea. They shut the whole shop down. Everybody sat down. They didn't have to be hiding from the boss. They just sat down. And there was a following that belonged to the school. He's sitting right back there too. He sat around, wait for a while. Nothing came on the PA, public address. Here he comes up to me in my office. Remember, he was a student of the school now. He says, well, doc, is this the day that the war will be over? I said, no, they just might as well go on back to work. It just won't be today. Is that so? I said, yes, that's so. Now he didn't try to dispute and argue with me. Dr. Allen, would you mind standing up? Am I lying? No, you're not. That's the man I'm talking about, see. It wasn't over. Now you can go get your history books and look and see. Now I had told you, remember, I had told you, Dr. Gross, see, way before it happened, that there was going to be a war. When it was going to break out, who was going to be involved and so forth and so on. Talking about the attack on Pearl Harbor, said no, Chinese, Japanese wouldn't jump on the Peking. Now here's what I'm trying to tell you. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. The things that I tell you, don't you let nobody else come along and tell you something different, see? I've had 44 years, going on 45 years experience with this, you see. I know what I'm talking about. I'm able and capable to prove it. There hasn't a major event happened in the world that I didn't tell this school about it before it happened. That's the reason why I say I don't have to prove my ministry 
I don't have to worry about it. See, see what I mean? I don't go home and sweat and, you know, carry on all about it. See, I go home and go to bed and go to sleep. See, got one more I want to tell you about. Then I'll move. The uh, reason excuse, me, excuse me, I'd like to say something. Uh -huh. um, I was not in the school when Dr. Kinley was in the school. I did not come until later. But one of the things that I was told is that he had like this little Timex watch and he would say that was going to happen right according to his watch and things would happen. And he went through things like the Six Day War. He went through um, World War World War II. He told them about Korea. And I just wanted to say that the thing that separates like like people say, um, Dathan and Chorus as well. Aren't I holy? Um, uh, Moses's brother and sister, they came up to his face and, and saying, well, aren't we holy too? Aren't we just as good as you? And I just wanted to say that Yahweh told them, I'm going to speak to Moses face to face. You, I'll come to a, in a dream. I just wanted, the point that I'm trying to make is that he had a divine vision and a revelation so that puts him on a different standing he saw it for himself we learn through it we learn through it by studying the pattern by seeing um correlations by by hearing things proven to him but he actually had a vision and uh, and um revelation making it sort of like him being an eyewitness that's why uh, people say, well, you, you worship him. No, he proved his ministry. He said something was going to happen. And sometimes you will read in the transcript, I never met the man. He'll say, he'll cause, he'll have somebody stand up. Did I say this? Yes. And so he would give somebody a witness. And then when it came to pencil, wow, that's just like Dr. Kinley said. So that's why we take the time to pay special heed to what he said because he didn't just talk and he proved what he had to say. He opened up the Bible in ways that in my experience, I had never seen before. I mean, it was so when they talk about um, to, uh, that to be baptized in, in the name, my eye just slipped over that baptized. Oh yeah, get in water. No, baptized in the name. The whole world didn't know that. He made the whole world to stand up and take notice and just say one more thing. Recently, I went to the Catholic Church and uh, I live in a Haitian neighborhood, so they have a French mass, they have an English mass. Well, before that, there was one mass and it was in Latin. And you didn't even know what you were saying. You were just there, et conspirator tu tu o. I mean, you could, you could look it up and see what you were saying, but you were just following all of this, uh, all, all of this majesty and, and ignorance and you had knew nothing. And here's a man coming along in, in plain language, preaching to you about your heavenly father in witnesses, with witnesses. That was so dynamic about the gift that was given us through the personage of Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, Springfield, Ohio. That's all I have to say. And that's right. And and uh, we just read this, and uh, so just to review, he says, you just continue to come, study, right. and then accept what you read. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to fix it, just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Now, there is mistranslations and misinterpolations in your Bible. We fix them, see? Mm -hmm. Now, you following me closely in what I'm saying to you? So, yeah. So, he's tell that's what you need to do. You continue and you check the things out so you know it for yourself. That's right. See? Uh, then he says, now, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. The things that I tell you, don't let nobody else come along and tell you something different. Mm -hmm. See, I've been, I've had 44 years going on 45 experience, 45 mm -hmm. years experience with this, you see. I know what I'm talking about. I'm able 
and capable to prove it. And then he says, there ain't been no major, <laughs> there ain't been no major event in history, you know, uh, that he didn't tell the school about. And that's right. What you had said, uh, I heard the same stories and you read it in lectures that, uh, that, that six day war in Israel, he took the days of creation of the vision shown to Moses and told them what was going to happen every day of that war <laughs> before it happened. <laughs> I mean, and he healed people of all manner of diseases, prophesied every major world event, and then, you know, wrote a book and sent it to the Pope. And, and, uh, and, and that book, it, it's still, it's still, uh, well... It's still just as beautiful today as when he wrote it, <laughs> that Elohim book. And he wrote it the second time in 1969 with the true names in it. But, uh, and so, yeah, one of the histories of it is, is that he said he only had this one chart. That's the elementary chart. Then in uh, 1946, you had the Moses chart. That's called series number one. Then the 40 plate chart is series number two. And that's what his son RP did. Uh, and so, you know, and then the school uh, continue, you know, I mean, it's continued to what it is today. But you know, this man had a vision revelation because there's just no way uh, uh, any human would ever, they just can't think this up. It is the truth Yahweh's given to the world. And so he said, I don't worry about it. I, I, after I make a prophecy, I go home and go to bed because <laughs> he knows the Holy Spirit told him. <laughs> and when he was in that, uh, that was Freddie, Dr. Freddie Allen's father that was working with him in Wright Aeronautical mm -hmm. Airport plant. And he asked Dr. Kinley, is this going to be the day? He said, no, he might as well go back to work because that ain't what I saw in my vision. <laughs> in other words, he saw it all in one day. All of this. You know, that's the Holy Spirit teaching you. When you catch something, he gets it by a vision. He said he didn't understand it. Then he had a revelation. You know, that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? Wouldn't the Holy Spirit have to bring it back to his remembrance? Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, and I just wanted to say one more thing. Because people have asked, I am not physically related to Dennis Allen, Freddie Allen, Beverly Allen, we just happen to have a, the same name and you bear the same resemblance that I do or because we are all sons and daughters of, of Joshua the Messiah. That's that's our family um, recognition. Got one more I want to tell you about then I move. The reason why I want to tell you about that is because in conjunction with what the man said this morning, I'm talking about Dr. Wibble Trainer. He said, these charts reveal the purpose of Yahweh when you understand them. And you wouldn't be jumping up here trying to revenge and disprove, see, which he said. I didn't say it. He said it. He said that he had tried that. Did you hear him say that? Yes. I wasn't asleep. I wasn't asleep then. Now here he is. He done come back to school, see. A lot of these things that I taught you folks through the years, he knew nothing about, see. Now the man's back in school and I said to him, now since you're back, see, a lot of these things you don't know nothing about, such as people being healed, the things that I did, and what you call prophecy and prediction is being fulfilled and taught in this school. I said, now I'm going to tell you one that's going to be just for you, to Dr. Trainum I'm talking about. Now, Dr. Trainum, if I'm lying, I'd appreciate it very much if you get up and tell me to my face in school that I'm lying. And if I'm lying, I want you to do that. So now here's where we, we were, sorry. We were over in Athens, Greece, 
and the Greek Orthodox Church had to go to the head. See, there was nothing in Greece. The head of the Greek Orthodox Church was not in Greece. See, he was in Constantinople. Constantinople. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or Istanbul. Now, I didn't know that David was with him. Dr. Trina, little David that went overseas. And it would be nice to mention some things about that school over there too. After that boy had gone over there, uh, David was with him. I told Dr. Trainer, now this one is going to be just for you. And if what I tell you don't happen, then my advice to you is for you to get back out of this school as quick as you can and drag everybody out that you can get out. I see it. Now there will be, this is for you, since I had predicted, excuse me, since I had predicted a lot of them see about many things, which many of the people who's been in this school for a long time know about. I said, now there's going to be an earthquake in Instam Istanbul within 48 hours. It will be in there within 48 hours. Now, if it don't happen like that, then you get out of this school. There he is sitting right there. I said, now this one's just for you. I didn't know little David was listening to. So within 24 hours, that was an earthquake in Istanbul. And every one of you had the privilege of reading it in the newspaper. I said nothing about it in this school. The fact of it, I was confined to bed when I told him about it. Am I lying, Dr. Trainum? No, you're not lying. Did it happen? It happened. It happened. Now, the reason why I brought all that up, you see, I know what I'm talking about, whether you understand it or not. Right. On these, mm -hmm. on these charts, see, you understand. Now, if Yahweh had not shown me, all right, let's say it this way. If he didn't exist and hadn't shown me, I wouldn't know no more about it than anybody else. I don't have nothing to boast and brag about on my own. I told you, I never went to school. And incidentally, I noticed that Yahshua the Messiah didn't go. They say they lied on him. They say he went to school, have record in the archives, but he didn't. That's a lie. Now read, Dr. Harris, I'm talking about such time as now present. Second, third. So now that, that's, pretty, that's pretty up to date, ain't it? I mean, yes, it is. Well, one thing about that he talked about was, well, he said that that guy, uh, Wilbur Trainum, mm -hmm. and if you look right within him, his name, it's Will Betray Him. Right. <laughs> and he ended, he ended up, he ended up uh, going to be a preacher in a church in Stone Mountain, Georgia. And he died yeah. just a year or two ago, whatever, how long, I don't remember. But he did lead back out, you understand? Uh, but then he did talk about it. He wanted to give him a witness. He mm -hmm. said that guy said he tried to prove it was wrong, and now he's back in school. So I wanted to give him, I, I wanted to give him one just for him. Uh, there's going to be an earthquake in Istanbul, and that's Turkey, in 24 to 48 hours, and it happened just like he said. It. Mm -hmm. And he said little David was there. That's David Rose, which he just resigned as a, a board of trustee member a while back, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and he says that's they what Dr. Kinley did. He said that he said that there was a guy over there, uh, and David went with him. Well, that was Michael Rothstein that he sent over there to Israel to have a school there, mm -hmm. uh, and so they did preach the gospel in Jerusalem there. Uh, and David's mother was in the school, uh, and so she was a witness, and she spoke Hebrew and everything, and. And was a witness, and it, and it, and matter of fact, Valerie was there. She could talk about it 
uh, he had to he had to convince his mother that Yod He Wahe was not Adonai. She would say she was taught that all her life. Right. And it took him hours for him to get over that Yod He Wahe is Yahweh and not Adonai. Hours. Mm -hmm. Because they were she was taught that. Yep. And Valerie was sitting there, I think. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, that's some of the history that he's talking about there. And he says, uh, I know what I'm talking about, whether you understand it or not. <laughs> In other words, he was shown it. <laughs> he said, I don't have nothing to boast about on my own. Oh, he said this. He says, uh, on these charts, see, you understand? Now, if Yahweh had not shown me, all right, let's say it this way. If he didn't exist and hadn't shown me, I wouldn't know no more about it than anybody else. I don't have nothing to boast and brag about on my own. I told you I never went to school. And incidentally, I noticed that Yashur Messiah didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> they say they lied on him. They said he went to school. I have record in the archives, but he didn't. That's a lie. <laughs> so you know uh, he went to the school of the highest learning and matter of fact he used to say I had a visual revelation and I wouldn't believe it if Yahweh hadn't showed it to me in other words you, you don't accept he don't want he didn't say okay you just have to believe I had a vision revelation no he gave proof about it there you know so uh, that was just to review some of that. And, and now he's going to go into the scripture lesson we had, which is second Timothy third chapter. Mm -hmm. Third chapter of second Timothy. Third chapter, second Timothy. This know also. Now, while you know so much about everything else, know this too, read. That in the last days, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now, listen, does anybody have to tell you about that? No. All the million different churches that you find around, see, all the unemployment that you find around, you understand? All the hypocrisy, murder, and everything, you understand? It presents a perilous times. Is that right? Right. All right. Now, Paul is telling Timothy way back there about, see, now you know this, a perilous time is going to come. How did he know that there was going to be a perilous time? How would he know? Now, here's how he would know, see. See, I got it. I got it up here. I can tell you something too, see, was because back here, before the flood, a perilous time happened, see? A dangerous time happened. Old man standing out there preaching 120 years, you see? And if you think it was only eight people back there, see, you're mistaken. You're sadly mistaken. Because he preached unto the four corners of the earth, the then populated earth. You understand? And then there was a whole lot of people with him, went along with him. But when it got right down, when he got right down to the day of parting, see, he didn't have nobody but him and his family. You follow? Now then, that's, listen. Just listen at this. At this time, now in a repetition, I ain't going to have nobody but me and my family. That's all. See? All right, Doc, read. For me, no, shall I, have to, I have to say this. You know, that's why the people are saying, Kinley and use your only hope of glory. Because it's only going to be Kinley and his family. That's huh. how they took that stupidness. Well, they, they started preaching stupidness, and then they just used that as one of their witnesses. Huh. But that's not the way it is. No. Uh, get the dispensation ages chart and then show the sect 
uh, if read Ephesians 3 and 14. Mm -hmm. See, Noah, yeah, Noah preached to everybody 120 years. See, and that 120 means a lot too. <laughs> See, you had 120 years. He preached at the end of the age. When Moses goes up in the mount, he is 40 days seeing that creation and pattern, goes down for 40 days to tell him what he saw, goes back up 40 days <laughs> and, and gets the second table of the stone and comes down and he's all lit up after 120 days there of having those two yeah. uh, visions there on top of Mount Sinai. And then you had uh, King David, I mean, King Saul, King David, and King Solomon, all 140 years apiece, 120 years. Then Yahshua Messiah lived 110, and, and then uh, 10 years later was the first Jubilee. That's Yahshua, the son of Nun. Mm -hmm. Then Yahshua fulfilled that, and he was 30 years in his ministry, then 40 in the wilderness being tested adversary, then 40 after he death, burial, resurrection. That's 110. He ascended and then 10 days later poured out the Holy Spirit, 120 at the end of the age. And on 120 <laughs> in the upper yeah. room. And then 6,000 years is 120 jubilees. That's where Dr. Kinley's at there. And then he has class set up at 120 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, everything has a meaning to it. Now, here's Noah preaching that 120 years, and then only only him and his family, only eight people saved. And he said, and if you think that's all there was back then, you're sadly mistaken. And he talked about also that, uh, uh, well, you see, they start off with perilous times shall come. <laughs> and and, and they, do we see perilous times out here? Yes. And he's going to get into it more and more. You know, yeah, it ain't never been as bad as it is now. Yeah, and it's bad. It was bad back there, but it's bad up here. You know, it's some crazy stuff. You Ooh. understand? So he's he's right on it. I mean, that's 1975, and it's up to date here. Even Ooh. worse. <laughs> uh, read up, read that Ephesians uh, 3 14. and 14. And you see right there, and Dr. Kinley's got that. In the fifth age, this kingdom age, that's one of the last scriptures he's got there is Ephesians 3, 14 through 15 there. Hmm. See, read. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father and our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, the Father of well, our Savior. Well, you, know, you know how we start off at 14? Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, you ought to start at 3 and 2 and then uh, keep the charts and come down a little bit. Read three and two, because it says for this cause. Well, what was the cause? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you kind of got to read up above there, don't you? Ephesians <laughs> three and two. Yeah. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of Yahweh, which is given unto me, to you were, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. Now you see that. He talks about a dispensation given to him. Did we know anything about a dispensation before we come down to school? How that Yahweh revealed unto him this by revelation, the mystery. These are mysteries, ain't they? Mm -hmm. As he wrote before, read on. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Yahshua the Messiah. And when you come to school, don't you understand the mystery? <laughs> the things uh the knowledge of Yahshua the Messiah you can understand he had he had a vision and revelation read on which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men now you see that he says in other ages did we know about other ages until we come down here you see how the Holy Spirit said that back there in the Bible and people been reading the Bible but it wasn't until a vision and revelation to have it pointed out to you that in other ages, uh, it wasn't it, it wasn't known to the sons of man. They didn't know back there from Adam all the way down. You understand? Uh, they didn't know in those other ages. Read. It is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. And of the same body 
And part so of you that, see that it's now being revealed. Where in the age we live in? That's what Paul's saying at the beginning of this age. Now we're down to the end of this age. You see that? Okay, you can't read all of it. So read the ninth verse. And to make all men see what is the fellowship. Well, you better read eight because it started with and there. Okay. Unto me, who am less than the least of all sons, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Yahshua the Messiah. And you know, I've been to schools where they say, see, it's unsearchable. You can't search it. Well, what do you think all this stuff is for? The Elohim book and the Bible. How do you think we know what we know if we didn't search nothing out? Isn't this a school of research? <laughs> they are un Anyway, but the Holy Spirit does reveal it. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And he says he was the least of the apostles. And he wrote more than all of them, pretty much. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he definitely had an understanding and he didn't just like he said Joshua didn't go to well anyway uh, Dr. Kinley didn't get it by he got by vision revelation okay uh, ninth verse now yeah and to make all men see no just some men no. oh. see people got that all mixed up and to make all men see really. what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in Yahshua the Messiah, or hid in Yahweh, who created all things by Yahshua the Messiah. Now, ain't that a mystery? Yeah. Did you, before you come to school, did you know that, well, they taught you Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ created all things? <laughs> no, they got him just being a brown hair, blue eyed guy to come year 4,000. But he's saying that's a mystery that Yahweh from the beginning it was hidden Yahweh that he created all things by Yahshua the Messiah. That's a spirit. He's a, he's a spirit. That spirit embodiment that we know as Elohim, that's Yahshua the Messiah. And there's people teaching that the Messiah is physical in the school. <laughs> Won't give it up either because some guy told him that. And Dr. Kinley just said, oh, no, you can't read the 11 first. According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Yahshua the, in Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Now, he, he got an eternal purpose, which he purposed in Yahshua the Messiah. Well, that's a pretty big purpose. And, and Yahshua Messiah must be eternal to purpose it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that's what we see on this chart here. See, matter of fact, that's the sixth aim of our school. Uh, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Mm -hmm. He must have seen the same thing, huh? Holy Spirit must have showed it to him. Now read 14 and 15 there. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father and Savior, of the Father Yahweh and our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Of whom the whole family in, in heaven, heaven and earth, earth is named. named. You see how he's bound. You know, you see, you see how the fact that when Dr. Kinley says that Noah and his family was saved, now ain't nobody gonna be saved but me and my family. Well, that's the families. The whole family in heaven and earth is named by the same Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, the Messiah. You see that? In other words, it's a spirit body. The angels are included in his spirit body. The souls that resurrected in his resurrection, the souls that have received the Holy Spirit, but's taken off the flesh in this age. And now the ones that are on the earth that are true recipients of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the whole family in heaven and earth that's going to be saved. You see, and that's what he was talking about with me and my family. <laughs> he ain't talking about no Kinley thing. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you know about the history of some of the Kinleys, boy, they got, anyway, and I will go there. It ain't about that. It's about the, uh, the souls being saved in Yahshua the Messiah. It was read the other day, 1 Timothy 
I mean, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's the spiritual body of Yahshua. You know, whether it be Jew or Gentile, body free, all been made to drink in the one spirit. Okay, we just wanted to do that before we got to the next thing. Uh, he's going to keep on with that Second Timothy, the third chapter there. And uh, he's going to go into things that's up to date. <laughs> Uh, still up to date because it says men will be lovers of their own. So if we ever seen a, a guy that like that former president, you ever seen anybody love himself that much and lie that much and people still love him? You no. know you're at the end of the age. And that's really what's going on in the school. Over there in, well, I, I call them hind quarters because hind quarters, you know, they're also dead quarters because they're preaching false doctrine. But they preaching stuff so bad, they're lying so bad that and people don't people love it. It's just amazing. So it's got to be reflected in the world. Yeah, it doesn't even make any kind of sense. But it's showing you how powerful them demons are. Uh, okay. Excuse me, Doctor um, Lewis. May I read verse sixteen before we start? Sure that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Thank you. And, and that's what happened. That's right. Thank you. That's right. That's what you do. You're strengthened. Oh, and you all just continue on there that you're strengthened by his spirit in the inner man. So that's what happens when you keep coming to class, you get stronger and stronger. See, you learn more and more, and he'll bless you more and more. <laughs> Read. Verse 17, that Yahshua may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted. Oh, I thought he was coming back. <laughs> you see how the other world, he said he dwells in your heart by faith 1,900 years ago, and they're still preaching. Jesus is coming. I thought he's supposed to be in your heart. You see how they don't know what they're talking about out there? Mm -hmm. They're being deceived. And he talked about that when we read about it, how millions of churches out there, they're using that Bible, but they don't understand it. And then in Matthew 24, 11, he says, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now, has that come to pass? Yes. Yep. There's many out there that don't know and been deceived. And there's many teaching them, ain't it? Saying they believe in the word of God. And don't even know what the word of Yahweh is. Mm. See, we're blessed to come down to this school. Okay, thank you for reading that. that really, and there's always more, of course. <laughs> I didn't I read care. the last two words, but it's okay. Being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all sons what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Yahshua which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness Yahweh. That's right. There's so much there. And that, uh, next, <laughs> uh, we could read all day. You understand? No, no. We can finish with what you're saying. For men shall be lovers of the of their own selves now men shall be lovers of their own selves you know i like to tell you something in a way that you wouldn't forget it see uh, up here but you might take it the wrong way i just want to tell you in that way i'll tell you this way and you believe me when i tell you i don't care what you think of yourself how important you may think that you are, your opinion of your own self, see, it makes no difference about how much money you got. Don't make no difference at all. The world don't care a thing about you. Now, the reason why I said that to you is to keep you from coming up here on this floor and making an ass out of yourself. They don't care nothing about you. They don't care nothing about the Messiah. 
excuse me, they didn't care nothing about the Messiah. They didn't believe him. They didn't believe Noah, see? Now, why, why could you get some kind of thought in your mind and get up on this floor and think somebody is going to be carried away with you? Understand? And all of them that would be tempted to be carried away with you, they will fall. Why? Because there's nothing to stand on. They themselves, as Yahweh said, as I live, saith Yahweh, to me, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Yahshua to the satisfaction or to the glory of Yahweh. You're going to have to do it, see? Man, it ain't going to do you no good at all getting up here saying things about this, these charts. It ain't going to do you no good. Now, let me give you one, see? It was stated, as we've already stated, see, you have to get up off of blood, water, and spirit. Now, we had read that what spirit was, and there ought not to be anybody in this book, in this, in this class, or out in the streets, for that matter, that have just just a fraction of sense to see if you come up off of it and Yahweh is spirit and he's the sum total of everything. And if you're going to come up off of that, you have a nothing to stand on. That's this. Now this is the tabernacle. This is him transfigured, the tabernacle. These vessels that are set in there, they haven't changed. You see what I mean? You can't take this and put it over here and this over there. You got to see where he told you, as Dr. Trainum told you this morning. Even those that constructed this tabernacle, even though Dathan, Abram, and Nathan they disagree with him because they were master builders. And Moses just, they weren't up there in that cloud with him. They didn't see it. Moses drew a line and said, now who's on Yahweh's side? Get over here. Who's on their side? Get over there, see? And the earth just opened up and swallowed them up. That's all. Now, that's all you're going to get out of this. Now, I want you to know this. This is not my work. I have never had sense enough to do nothing like this, see? And it's a little late now. See, I'm old. And what the folks call senile, see? Don't have good sense, see? If I didn't have it back there in my youth, I wouldn't have it now. And I'll say something else about that too. This might help some. Now people do get old and they do get senile. Now I'm 80 years old, see, subject to senility, a senility. No, it's called senility. To senility, see. Well, but look, I can't get this out of my head, see. See, you follow? I can't get it out of there. It's in there to stay. Now, stay. But now listen, the folks that I'm trying to teach it to, they can get old and senile and slip up. But I can't do that. <laughs> That's right. See, I can't do that, see. It's straight, just like it was then and now. And for 44 years now, call you back for 44 years, things that I have been telling you about many times have been fulfilled. This school has been blessed, whether you appreciate it or not. Some things are hard to say. It's hard for me to stand up here and tell you 
just like Yahshua Messiah went through those three and a half years until he got right down unto the end of it. And after he got down to the end of it, see, which he hadn't done before, in the 23rd chapter of Matthews, he said, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You won't go in yourself and you won't permit anybody else to enter in. And he went on to tell them about devouring widows' houses. Is that right? That's right. That's right. And you should, well, we should tell you that that numbers, the 16 chapters. See, when Yahweh told them to build that tabernacle, mm -hmm. who Korah, Dathan, and Abiram are, that's their names. It kind of wasn't uh, written in there right there, but that's where it is. It's number the 16 chapter. Yahweh told Moses to have the children of Israel build that tabernacle. Well, these guys said, well, we done built them things down in Egypt. We got a better way. That ain't going to stand. Yep. And Moses said, uh, well, you better separate yourselves from them because Yahweh's going to do something here. Mm -hmm. and you'll find out that uh, uh, well read it Matt uh, just read uh, uh, Actually, number 16 and uh, about 30 there we're not reading all that but okay. yeah. number 16 and 30 but if Yahweh made a new thing and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up with all that appertain unto them. And they go down quick into the pit. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked Yahweh. They thought they was going against Moses. <laughs> no, Yahweh told him to build that. Yahweh Elohim showed them that matter. Right. You understand? And then they want to act like they're, and you'll read later on. Uh, it that's what happened. Uh, uh, just read 32, I guess. Well, whatever. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. Now you can read that in the Bible. Then you can ask the question, why? <laughs> and Dr. Kinley said, why the earth swallowed them up? Because you can be swallowed up in your carnal mind how you think things are supposed to be. You understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you ever think about that? That's why the earth swallowed them up? Because you swallowed up in your carnal mind? They were swallowed up in their carnal mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we did a new thing. They bring it on Moses. May I read 33? Well, we're, I, you all can read that stuff later. Uh, but uh, that was the point. That was one of the points there. And uh, then when you go to uh, Matthew, well, read Luke eleven fifty two. That's one of the things he kind of talked about. But he also talked about Matthew twenty three. Now you talk about Matthew twenty three. He's telling those religious leaders that you're you're a generation of vipers. You're uh, blind guides. You're uh, you try to make a proselyte, uh, you try, you can pass land and sea to make a proselyte, and you make them the same twofold child of hell as you are. Now, that's doing some cussing out, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. read that 1152 there. Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, ye hindered. Now, see... So they say, well, to you lawyers, they ain't talking about going, they, they, was, they were supposed to be experts in the law that was given to the Israelites. So that's why they're called lawyers. For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. That's what that pattern is. See, uh, that's a key of knowledge to understand the creator, but they don't, they, they don't see it. Uh, just like the world don't have a, did you have anybody tell you about a pattern, how it correlated with the human body? <laughs> How it shows the dispensation of ages and how it just shows the whole purpose of Yahweh. <laughs> no, we didn't hear that. 
the, they taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves. They, 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 they ain't got the Holy Spirit yet. And them that would enter in, ye hindered. They mm -hmm. hinder people from knowing the truth. And Yahshua's there. Tell them about it. So in that Matthew, the, the 23rd chapter, uh, well, yeah, you don't want to uh, read the 15th verse there. I mean, there's a lot there. He told him so much stuff there. Uh, I can't, you know. He said that he said you want. You might as well stop whining. What did he tell him? <laughs> well, you got 23 and 9. 23 and 9, he tells him, call no man father on earth. For there's only one father, your father in heaven. You got the Roman Catholic Church still saying most holy father. Mm -hmm. Then you got the, you got, and you got the, uh, the schools out there, hundred schools saying Dr. Kinley's our father. He said, call no man father. You understand? Roman Catholic Church calls the Pope most holy father and all the priests are called father. You understand? And the Holy Spirit said, call no man father because there's only one father, your father, which is in heaven. And that's Yahweh. You see that? Okay, go to the 15th verse. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye come past sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of Gehenna than yourselves. Yeah, they, won't, they he don't like the word hell, so it's Gehenna. You understand? <laughs> so that's what a holy name guy does. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll also say Sheol and others that, but it, it does some cases does mean uh, grave and so on. But uh, but anyway, he, uh, read twenty three there. There's so much he's got in here. Mm -hmm. Woe um, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes. Just move the screen, Dr. Allen. I can't read 23rd. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and truth. These ought, these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. See, they were supposed to give tithes, and they're tithing all these little herbs and stuff. <laughs> and, they, and he said, "You've omitted the weightier matters of the law: judgment, mercy, and faith. These you should have you should have done, and not leave the other undone." Mm -hmm. And so he just tells them about themselves and how, and then that's what heated them up to put him out there on the cross. Yep. See, excuse me, can I it. just give one example? Sure. So he would. He raised a man from the dead. And they were saying, when you read the chapter, you were saying, you know, it would be good for Yahshua to, do, to die, and it would be good for Lazarus to die. And it's like, what? He brought him out of, out, out of the grave. He's, he's in the grave clothes for four days, representing the 4,000 years that man was, was just covered in, in, in ignorance and, and death and not not knowledge of their heavenly father and they want they have no joy no happiness no uh, even after the holy spirit is poured out in acts the third and fourth chapter a man who had been a an invalid his whole life he's leaping and they're saying okay let's beat up these guys <laughs> they they're nuts okay bye yeah that's right i mean uh he was excited it's in the Bible how excited he was that if there was a man had a hundred sheep and uh, one of them goes astray and he finds the sheep, he says, that's just like a soul being saved. The whole angels are rejoicing for a soul that's being saved. And you're right. Uh, Yahshua, uh, John 11 chapter, Lazarus dead for four days. And Yahshua the Messiah resurrected. He says, Lazarus come forth and he comes forth resurrected after four days and then he Joshua says in 14 and 13 these works shall you do in greater works because I go to my father what's a greater work in resurrecting somebody from the dead after four days 
Well, Yahshua Messiah did it. He, he resurrected Lazarus after dead four days. And then when he said in uh, John eleven twenty five, 25, I'm the resurrection of life. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And so when he died and buried and went to preach to the, the souls, he, he they uh, 4,033 years of souls resurrected after he resurrected. Now that's doing some resurrecting, ain't it? That's what that Lazarus for four days is showing how he's going to resurrect souls on the day of he resurrected. Uh, he resurrected them souls from Adam to John the Baptist, you know. Uh, now that's that's proven he's the resurrection life. And then he says, and he that liveth and believeth on me uh, shall never die. Believest thou this? What's that talking about? Well, he pours out the Holy Spirit. They preach the gospel. And when the souls are being saved by believing the true gospel of the kingdom, uh, that saves a soul throughout eternity. That's a greater work. And that's what the Holy Spirit's doing by preaching this true gospel at the end of this age. That's right. That's some good stuff. <laughs> and you just can't get no better than what uh, we're learning about down here. You know what I'm saying? And these things he's saying, yeah, that was 1975, but aren't they sweet just now as it was back then? Huh? Yes, they are. We wasn't there back then, but uh, I tell you what, it's some beautiful teaching because it's from the Holy Spirit at the end of this age. And that's what we praise is Joshua. Okay, so uh, there, we could always say more, but this is a great transcript. So we want to try to go into a little bit more there, Yahweh willing. So we back to the transcript. What are we going to? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the audience says that's right. <clears throat> Dr. Kennedy, and for pretense, making great long prayers and all that kind of thing, you see, you follow? And they're hypocr hypocrisy. And then he finally said something. Now, how can you escape the damnation of hell? See, there's no escape. So now, uh, y'all sick of me now? No. no. Finish, finish reading that, Dr. Harris. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Now, I'm telling you, don't nobody care nothing about you. They don't give a tinker's damn about you. You ain't no need of you getting all stuck up in yourself and get up here and try to, you understand, be against Yahweh. You see what I'm talking about? They don't care that much about Yahshua the Messiah. They hung him out there on a tree, you follow. But listen, folks, now get this straight. Don't forget this one. These things must come. And if they did not come, then this school, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> This school would not be right. It's just got to be this way. See, the wheat and the tares have got to grow up together, see. Got to get right down to the end. You see what I'm talking about? Before things would be exposed, see. You follow? Now then, don't forget now, Solomon put it like this. Rejoice, O oh young men, and walk after the imagination of your heart. But while you're doing that, don't forget for all these things, Yahweh will bring you into the judgment. See, you follow? Now proceed. Covetous. Covetous. Bolsters. Now wait. Just a minute, just a minute. Now you got the word covetous. Covetous. That means desire to have something that belonged to the other fellow. It's not your own. Therefore, the law says, thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet what? Thy neighbor's wife or his ox or his ass or anything else that belongs to him. Now here you got it over here. The apostle Paul says, covetous, 
covet what? The best thing, see, that he didn't say that, he didn't say thou shall not covet him. Read on, Dr. Harris. Boasters. Okay, now, where that is, is 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, when he does the gifts of the Spirit. That's the last verse in 1 Corinthians. You better, ought to read that, just so you know it's where it is in the Bible. It gets... <clears throat> First and there's Corinthians. also a rich man in Matthew, the 19th chapter. And that guy says he done all the commandments. And then Yahshua <laughs> said, well, then go and sell everything you got and give to the poor and follow me. And he walked <laughs> away sad, because Dr. Killing said, because he done rob people. And what he what he was doing was coveting those things. <laughs> so that's <laughs> the one thing he exposed was the coveting, desiring things. But then he said, but you should cover it covet this that means desire a true knowledge and understanding in the holy spirit and things that comes from yahweh read on now concerning spiritual gifts brethren i would no not no no ignorant that, no 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 it's it's the last verse of first corinthians 12 12 31 there mm -hmm. but covet read. earnestly the best gifts mm -hmm. and yet show i unto you a more excellent way so see, you want to desire, covet earnestly the best gifts, mm -hmm. those things of the spirit, see, and I will show you a more excellent way. So that's what Dr. Kimmy was talking about. There. I just wanted you to see it in the Bible. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So I just wanted you to see it. Bolsters. Now, you see, somebody wants to boast that they know more about this than I do, see? You follow? See, you can't do that. All you're doing is just, now, some simple-minded somebody, they may follow you on off someplace, see? You understand? But when it's all said and done, you're going to have to do it either sooner or later. You're going to have to get right back up in front of this class or in front of Yahshua, the throne of Yahshua, and bow your knees and confess, see? So you, you're not getting away with something. I want you to realize that. You follow? All right. Proud. They're covet. They're proud. They're boastful, see? Now, I'm boastful. I'm boasting Yahweh, see? And he backs me up. And don't you jump up on that thing, you see? Because if you do, I get you. And listen here, folks. I'm not going to do it. I just might as well tell you about it now. I ain't going to do, I ain't going to sit around here and see the devil come in here and drag off somebody. I ain't going to do nothing like that. So now you be very careful about what you say. Now, if you want to pull out if you want to go somewhere, cut out. But you let the rest of these sheep alone. And when you think you're gone, you haven't. Because it's all it'll all catch up with you just as sure as shooting. Ain't that right, Dr. Trainer? That's right. Now, see, he said that's right. Now, let me tell you something about myself. In 1936, I run off and went to Cincinnati, said, well, I won't have to be bothered with that no more, see. Dr. Gross and a bunch of them in, these, in those days in Springfield, they went on home and sat down. Then the preachers out of the churches, which they attended, the Church of God there, they said, well, now, we'll get them back. But before I went to Cincinnati, this is what I told them. I said, every last one of you who understand what I'm talking about, you'll die just like I just like I leave you if you never see my face again in the flesh. I said, them that understood now. And that's just exactly what happened. Every last one of them that's ever been in this school 
and understood what I said have passed and gone. You know what I mean by past, don't you? They died right that way. And every last one of you that understand what I'm talking about, you will die just that way. If you are not living when Yahshua the Messiah is revealed from heaven, you understand. See, there's nowhere else for you to go now. Hey, time. Okay, that, that is it. And uh, so one of the things that uh, uh, he was saying, and this has happened, you know, this is a school. In a school, you have a test. And ever since Dr. Kinley took off the flesh, people have rose up and say they're Dr. Kinley or they're this one or they're that one and then teach you things and got people following after them and everything else. Then you're just making a mess out of the whole thing. Yep, and right. so the same thing he's saying is exactly what we saw go on in the school. And see, they didn't believe Yahshua the Messiah back there. So right. that's why you ain't going to have a lot of people believe in Yahshua the Messiah now, even though you're telling the straight up truth. And that's why we do stand up against false doctrine. Some people say, oh, no, that's what, you know, I don't, I don't talk about false doctrine no more, you know, because, yes, we do, because you want to help the sheep out. He yeah. said, you want to cut out, go ahead, but you leave the sheep alone. Right. <laughs> so uh, that's right. We're sorry we didn't get to finish this thing, but, man, he gets into some beautiful stuff, don't he? Yes. Yes. <laughs> So it, this is the best teaching and this is the greatest teaching ever given to mankind. And you're blessed if you can be able to hear the things that the Holy Spirit's saying. And uh, and so, uh, well, it's a great transcript and uh, and and we haven't even finished yet. <laughs> and you're not going to. So hopefully you read it and check it out. All praise go to Joshua. Right on. Hallelujah. 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 You see, we thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We yep. hold classes Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. Our class with our Jamaican brethren is Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time. And now and ever, let us all say together, hallelujah. 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 God bless your day. Hallelujah. God bless your day. God bless your day. I think I'll come back. Love me, Yahshua. Hallelujah. Peace and love, brethren. Y'all have a great week. You too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Yes, sir. Where's that transcript? Or what? What? It's in the. Uh, the that's the last transcript. The last Dr. Kinley lecture. Um, it's the last lecture. I don't know which book it is. I don't. I don't have those. Gray books. book. It's in the gray book. It's the last one in the gray book, number forty-five. Okay. It's also in the Ohio book. They call the blue book. It's the last lecture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. good. He wasn't yeah. proud. Yeah, he lays it out sweet. He said it was a message he had to give. Yep. Yeah. And it's up to date, ain't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he wasn't proud. Yeah, yeah, no. was, yeah I, I enjoy that. And you know, that thing that, thing that he was able to uh, foretell what was going to happen, Nobody does that. That's right. Nobody says, oh, you know, oh, there's going to be uh, October, what was it? No, October 7th, they, they're going to come in, in from Gaza and, and, and hurt all these. Nobody said nothing about that. That's right. 
They didn't say there's going to be a great earthquake in Japan on January 1st. <laughs> they didn't even tell us that there was going to be a little earthquake in Brooklyn. <laughs> 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 that's right I mean that that proved that that man had a true Brian divine King, vision oh revelation when you yeah. have him say all those things and, and uh, well I mean even the charts proved that the man had a vision revelation I mean <laughs> looking at something. I mean wow yeah talking about organizational skills yeah nobody them guys in Harvard and Yale and over there in Oxford and all them big universities, they never thought about this. No. No. And I saw uh, on the news, they had a guy that, uh, you know, one of those uh, well, they, they have what I forget they call it, the Chris, Crimson something, because it's the Harvard thing. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and they were saying that they were uh, dedicated to the pursuit of truth. Well, they ain't found this. They ain't found the truth. I, I was thinking, man, maybe we need to go over there and start preaching to them. <laughs> um, oh, in uh, Boston? Yeah, because they said that they said something about their pursuit of truth. I forgot the guy said that's what they were dedicated to. Right. Well, this, they don't have this. I'll tell you that. And I know there ain't. They ain't. They're teaching Lord God Jesus just like everybody else. In their religious school, probably at Harvard. I ain't been there, but I'd say that's what they're doing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're blessed for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's a fight, I you know. know. And to think that he didn't want any money, and he was offered all this money. And this that's is right. During the depression, everybody needed some money, and he's like, "Nope, no, thank you." That's right. You can't pay like like you said, uh, like it was said before. You said uh, uh, there ain't enough money in this world to pay for this teaching, so you just have to give it to us. That's you amazing. Can't pay for it. All you have to do is pay attention. <laughs> he amazing. said he didn't he didn't preach no cheap sermons when he was offered That's right. a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> That's wow. right. That is That's amazing. Right. He didn't try to make himself out to be somebody. Hey, Dr. Lewis. Hey, uh, brethren. This Why is a I don't know. Pray, like Joshua. Um, I have a quick question. Um, somebody might need to mute their phone. I think that's Bernie. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Um, this is Candice from uh, Sacramento. And I wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned the charts. I wanted to know if there was a specific order in regards to studying the charts or are the charts based on any, um, like are they based on a specific order? Because I'm still like trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, so uh, you, I guess you got your thing, didn't you? I did, I got my thing. Joshua, yes. So that, that big chart, the long one or the big um, booklet uh, that elementary charts the first one that he did and you'll see a lot of scriptures on there and so uh, those are things to look at you know and and, uh, and you I've been ask, looking at them I've been looking at and them you and you can I also ask questions I mean you know at times and we can try to help you out whatever you know because there, there's a it, just keep doing what you're doing come to classes you can also watch classes you know what I'm saying that's true too that is true yeah. too I wonder if there's a class that actually just has just goes over the charts well <laughs> uh uh you know that that was one well yeah uh, i was gonna do it and i didn't do it because i didn't feel qualified to do it but that would be a good project for this class yeah we've done stuff like that but you know you can't go over everything of course you know it, it, that's uh but you can get a little start you know what i'm saying i mean right uh, just like the elementary chart with the we were talking about earlier with blood, water, spirit coming on down and, and uh, the death, burial, resurrection, ascension. 
uh, you know, even last night, uh, uh, in Springfield, I went through the some some of the number prophecies in Daniel, mm -hmm. and so we went through the twenty three hundred day and the four ninety cycle and the uh, twelve sixty twelve ninety and the thirteen thirty five and uh, but you can't tell it all. <laughs> You know, but those are great. It shows you that this man had a vision and revelation. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody goes into those things. Nobody. Uh, and, we're and when we say nobody, we mean it. Mm -hmm. And even and even some people in the school don't know nothing about it. You understand? Mm -hmm. Been around a long time because they just haven't been taught. And they haven't researched and hadn't checked out stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of being a lost art there. Uh, people talk about a lot of things and sometimes people will talk about things and not have it quite all right either. That's true. And so, uh, and that's why we, uh, the, yeah, we search and research and, mm -hmm. and you receive the correction and don't have a root of bitterness about it. <laughs> so right. there are schools that, the classes that have gone over that many times, but uh, uh yeah, it's just, uh, I know that when you're new, it's it's easy to be hungry. <laughs> but uh, you can look at the charts and look up the scriptures. Mm -hmm. You understand? Plus, right. you know, now you have an Elohim book. I'd read that too. You yes, I'm reading that. Yes. Yes. I was just, I was just asking to, uh, just to, just as a student, a hungry student, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. So I was just, you know, testing that theory out. And I appreciate you. Everyone have a great weekend. And I'm going to sit back and chill. Well, okay, well, yeah, we'll try. And, and we can do those things. Try to go through charts and stuff and try to help you out if you want you know, that's what that's what this thing was for is to help people out. You know what I'm saying? And so when you have a question, we can kind of do that. I mean, she's got the chart up there right now. <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, on the right side there, uh, right at the top, it says, see first John five, seven and eight. And when you look that up, in the King James Version, it'll say, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Well, uh, the, the Apostle John's not, that's First John, it says, see First John 5, 7, 8. Well, he's not just running his mouth about something. He, he's going by a pattern. And you look at the pattern, you look in the most holy place, there's three that bear record heaven, Father, Word, Holy Spirit, these three are one. Well, you have a three in one furnishing with the archangels, mercy seat, and the Ark of the Covenant. That's a three in one to show the three that bear record in heaven, Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, these three are one. Then there's three that bear witness in earth. So you go down to the court roundabout. It says the Spirit, because at the door, now see where the high priest is being anointed at the pattern? That's really happening at the door, but you couldn't fit the high priest and the anointing oil right there at the door. So he's got over there to the side. That's the spirit. Mm -hmm. Then the waters and the labor, that's water. And then you have the blood. See, and these three agree in one. Now you also have what we we talk about the gospel of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. So the gospel of Yahshua is how Yahshua died, buried, resurrected, ascended. Well, you have that in the pattern. It, that's the simplification of the pattern. Mm -hmm. The high priest killed a sacrifice. That's a death. He buries in the labor. He resurrects into the holy place. Then once a year, he would ascend into the most holy place. So that's your death, burial, resurrection, ascension. So all of these plates, you can show the blood, the water, and the spirit. Uh, and we sometimes use 40 because in the holy place there, when you go uh, blood uh, at the altar where the high priest killed the sacrifice and put the blood on the altar, that's a death. And then you have blood there. 
then when then he go after he kills the sacrifice he buries in the labor that's a burial see and that's water so burial and water see uh, go go together there and then when the high priest would uh, well he'd burn it back up at the altar and then pour the blood out and so on wash himself at the labor his feet his hand and then go in and 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 he was anointed one time he could go through the door so that anointing of the high priest at the door is representing the, the spirit principle there. And then he resurrects through the door to show that Yahshua Messiah, when he resurrects, he resurrects a quickening spirit. See? Mm -hmm. Then in, when he gets into the holy place, from the door to the lampstand is 10 feet. So from the lampstand to the altar of incense is 10 feet. From the altar of incense, the table of shoe bread is 10 feet. And then 10 feet back to the door. So you have 10, 20, 30, 40. So you have a principle of blood, water, spirit, 40. And then you'll see that on all the Bible stories. See, uh, like uh, we go over there to Adam. Uh, he died in his consciousness. His death brought blood unto all mankind. Lenore, you got to slide over to Adam there. Uh, 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 so when Adam dies, at blood brought at death brought blood unto all mankind. You see, you got a tombstone there where he dies later on, but he died in his conscience mm -hmm. first. Then you see him working there. It says by the it says by the sweat of his face shall he eat bread. So that death brought that uh, well his death. And you know what? There's a little circle down there where Romans five fourteen. See that little black circle there. Yes. That's, showing that, that's showing that when he died, that brought darkness <laughs> the, to all mankind. Then that 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 little that darkness gets bigger and bigger. Man's mind gets darker and darker as time goes on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, and you see when he's dying on the cross, see how big that blackness is, how big that ball is now? <laughs> Man yeah. was in darkness, and Yahshua the Messiah dies to uh deliver man from that bondage of death and darkness and ignorance okay, but anyway, okay. But anyway, so his death brought blood unto all mankind that's adam he by the sweat of his face back up at adam by, yeah. uh, by, by the sweat of his face shall eat bread that's water angels garden away that spirit and then they they was in the garden with moses two visions 40 days Okay, go over to Noah when he sees a vision and preaches the gospel. He's putting the blood on the people's head. That's Ezekiel, the uh, 33rd chapter, four through six. Then he saw in his vision was going to rain. That's water and blood, water. And then uh, Yahweh closed the door, that spirit, and then it rained 40 days, 40 nights. You see, blood, water, spirit, 40. Mm -hmm. see? And mm -hmm. so. And then you also have from the fall of Adam, that's a death. So what do you do with a dead man? Bury him. You bury him. That's what the flood is, is a burial with water. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then that ark resurrected. It ascended and sat on Mount Ararat. Uh, that's a death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. See that? And mo moving on to another age there. Then the next plate, you have Adam, and, and he's got right down below there, it says the death, burial, resurrection of Isaac. What it is, is you got, uh, you see, uh, Abraham's uh, going to kill his son, and then right in this, above his head, you see, you see his son being resurrected in his mind. So that means that he, if he does kill him, and, his, and, 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 and he's buried, he's going to resurrect because Yahweh said he would bless all the families of the earth through thy seed. And Isaac was that promised seed from his wife. And he told so, the servants, I and, the, I and my son will return unto you. That's right. So he knew that it was going to happen. Uh, but now what happened is he's getting ready to kill him. And the angel said, don't do it. So then he sees a ram caught in the thicket. So the ram caught in the thickets, that's blood. They just went up a mountain and they're sweating and crying because he got to kill his son. That's water. Right. Then the angel stops it from killing that spirit. And his brother Ishmael was 40 years old at that time. So that's blood, water, spirit, 40. 
See, now the children of Israel would get out of the land of Egypt, they had to kill a lamb. They were buried in the cloud in the sea, they resurrected in the wilderness, and then they, the new birth ascended and got their inheritance. Death, burial, resurrection, ascension. See, it's going by a pattern, testifying to Yahshua the Messiah. Then this lamb killed, they had to put the blood on the lintel of the door, two side posts, and dip in a basin below. That's blood. They went to the Red Sea. That's water. Yahweh deliver, uh, divides the waters, and then the angel leads them. That's spirit. And they were in the wilderness for 40 years. See that blood, water, spirit, 40? See how simple it is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going by a pattern. So then... Uh, then we already went through the pattern, but you have a death at the altar, a burial at the labor, a resurrection through the door. And you know, this gate was 30 feet wide. The door was three feet wide. So that's a death, burial, resurrection at 33. Then once a year, he would ascend into the most holy place. That's death, burial, resurrection, ascension. It's preaching the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And then you find out that the, uh, uh, he killed the sacrifice and put the blood on the four horns of the altar. That's blood. He go to the labor and bury the sacrifice and also wash himself before he goes in. Uh, that's blood, wash his feet. That's foot washing there. Blood, water. And then the, he was anointed one time, that spirit, and he's going into the, it's the spirit that's dictating him doing this. And you have that 40 principle in the holy place. That's blood, water, spirit, 40. Now, Yahshua Messiah. See, here's baptism and ministry. The next plate, it's, it's, you see him on the cross there. But he ain't died yet. But, but that's, he's the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. For the creator to come in a physical body as a baby, you can't get no lower than that. That's a crucifixion. He comes in a flesh and blood body to be the sacrifice for the sin of the world. That's Matthew's second chapter when he's born. And he's born to be the sacrifice for the sin of the world. The Lamb of Yahweh, which take away the sin of the world. Then he goes to John the Baptist to be water baptized. So that's blood. He comes in a flesh and blood body. Water baptized. That's water. Angel descended like as a dove, that spirit. Then the fourth chapter says the spirit led him into the wilderness. He was test the adversary 40 days. Then he sees the multitude. He goes up to a high mountain. That's an ascension. You understand? Then that's when he speaks down the sermon from the mount. So that's blood, water, spirit, 40. And then, you know, he also ascended up in the mount. And so it's so over here, it, you know, we're saying, uh, somebody might say, well, How's that? What's that got to do with me? Well, uh, we all come in this world. Uh, the water bag breaks and there's a show of blood. Ain't that blood and water? Then the spirit that made us in our mother's womb, it animates us and keeps us alive however long we've been living. That's blood, water, spirit. So you came in this world by blood, water, spirit, and you still got blood water spirit that's keeping you physically alive okay and the average birth is 40 weeks so those things that are in the bible they're up to date today there's babies still being born by blood water spirit you know if they have a c-section they cut somebody that's blood ain't it <laughs> then the water back you know breaks and then you have the uh the one that made them is the spirit and that's what gives you breath and life is, is the spirit. That's blood, water, spirit. What's it talking about? It's talking about Yahshua and Messiah. That's what's on the next part of the plate down below. It's taught all these death, burial, resurrections, and the law and the prophets are preaching about Yahshua and Messiah, how he's going to come in and die for the sin of the world. He's going to be buried, and then he's going to resurrect on the third day, quickening spirit. Then he's going to ascend, and then 10 days later, he's going to pour out the Holy Spirit. That's good news, that there's life after death. Is just talking about his death, burial, resurrection, and sent you out Holy Spirit. That's the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And you saw it according to the scriptures there. Then when he's on the cross, he shed his blood. The blood is for the remission of sins. That's Hebrews 9, about 23 or something like that. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. And it was said earlier this week, you know, people sometimes, they say that John the Baptist, when he was baptized, and that was for the remission of sins. That's not correct. That's for the repentance. He told them that I baptized with water under repentance. Remission means forgiveness. 
We didn't get no forgiveness yet. You understand? That's Joshua the Messiah dying for the sin of the world. Then they pierced him inside, out came blood and water. Uh, that water is representing the washing of regeneration, how our minds need to be cleansed by the living water, see? And then he resurrected a quickening spirit. That's blood, water, spirit. And then he tarried 40 days making spiritual appearances. Well, see, the gospel didn't end just because Joshua did those things. So you see, you see how Dr. Kinley's got, and, and, and when he was washing the disciples' feet, he told Peter, you don't know what I'm doing now, but you will hereafter. So when he poured out the Holy Spirit, uh, and you, that's when he un they understood. And you see how he's got down there. He's got them at the Passover. And he's saying, this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Now, the Roman Catholics say, oh, that means he turned that wine into his blood. And that's what they're doing now. No. He's, this means himself. He's the blood of the New Testament, which he shed for many. Then he rises from supper and washes them with water. That's blood, water. And then uh, he poured out the Holy Spirit on them. And that started the fourth age, which is like four or, four or 40 there. Okay. And so, and then, and then now if you've seen this blood, water, spirit come all the way down through, See, now here, here you got Stephen being stoned in Acts, the seven chapter. They're being, they're being persecuted because they're preaching the true gospel and they scattered them. Paul and them scattered, you know, by, by persecuting those that had received the Holy Spirit and were preaching against keeping the law of Moses because Joshua fulfilled it. And they, those people didn't understand that. And plus, Paul was lied to saying that the disciples stole his body away. And Dr. Kinley covered that in the transcript, which was real sweet, too. He said, he said, see, the, the whole creation preaches the gospel of Yahshua. The sun goes down every day to show you the true sun. Yahshua Messiah went down for the sin of the world. And when the sun goes down, doesn't it turn dark? Well, when mm -hmm. Yahshua Messiah being the son of Yahweh, when he's on the cross, it turned dark. See, then the sun's buried below the horizon. And then you have faith that when the sun goes down at night, it's going to resurrect in the morning because it happens every day. It's to give you faith that Yahshua Messiah, the true son of Yahweh, the only begotten son of Yahweh, did die and was buried. And then he did resurrect early in the morning. Just like that. that's why the S-U-N does that every morning because it's testifying to the S-O-N, the only begotten son. He's the real son of Yahweh. He's the son that made the son. <laughs> causes it to do that. See how the gospel is being preached throughout all the world? And then the sun ascends to its zenith every day, and then it sets. That's showing a death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and he ascended and set into the hearts and minds of mankind and will set in your heart and mind if you believe it. You understand? It's really sweet there. So that's Acts of seven chapter down there. That's him being, uh, Stephen being stoned. That's blood being shed or he died. Then Acts the eight chapters when Philip is baptized in the Ethiopian eunuch. See, if you didn't know, see the pattern go blood, water, spirit, 40, all the way down, then you wouldn't know that Acts of seven chapters got blood. So you should be looking for water in Acts eight. And that's and there's water there. That's when Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. Then it said the spirit caught him away because he wasn't doing what he's supposed to do there. <laughs> and then the Acts nine chapters when Paul's converted on the road to Damascus. See, that's by the spirit, ain't it? When that spirit revealed to him these things, that's blood, water, spirit. And see, no man ever taught uh, Paul these things. He received a vision and revelation directly from Yahweh Elohim. That's the beginning of this age. So that's the same way with Dr. Kinley. No man taught him these things. He received it by the Holy Spirit. Yahweh just caught him up at the end of the age to give him the truth and gives him the awesome task. You know, a black man in your 1931, uh, black man wasn't living so good back in. You understand what I'm saying? And now he gives a man a vision and revelation and tells him, sends him out into the world yeah people won't believe him just because of his skin color he said yeah he ain't got the right paint job <laughs> but yahweh 
Well, he, well, he, he give it to him, and he had to more or less. It said at the, you know, it says that the vision would speak and not lie at the end. And plus, at the end of every age, he gives a man a message. Well, he come himself as Yahshua the Messiah, but he, Dr. Kinley said, that's what really happened. I received Yahshua the Messiah. How could he be writing up these books, do these charts, if it wasn't the Holy Spirit in it? You understand? It's showing that was the Holy Spirit in it. And so the next chart, well, you also have a, some of these charts, and these are just basic things going up. But these charts really, uh, just go back up to Adam there for a just a moment if you're there. What you'll see is uh, Adam, that's, see, he's in the most holy place. You see him driven out, so that's going down. Then Noah, this plate's going up because <laughs> the ark, you know, is prepared. It goes, it rises on the waters and sets on Mount Ararat. Now when Melchizedek and, and Abraham there, uh, he's given a promise. Now he has the birth of his son Isaac and now he's going to kill it. That's going down. And then when the children of Israel are down there in Egypt, now they're getting ready to go back. So that's going, so we're going down and up. And isn't that how a heartbeat is? <laughs> going down and up. And then by the pattern, he was born, uh, uh, so he was born, uh, well, he's born in Nazareth. Uh, I mean, no, he's conceived in Nazareth that's most holy place which means it's in Galilee which means circle now our priest went around the most holy place plus the angel revealed himself then they went down into Bethlehem and that's where he was born that's in the holy place and you see it going down and then and in Bethlehem ham means bread house of bread that's what the holy place is is a house with the table of shoe bread in it so that's good and then he goes down into Egypt you understand he told to go down to Egypt that's like the court roundabout now you see the next plate in his ministry. He eats the Passover with his parents. That's in April. He goes to be baptized, just like they, they went through the Red Sea at 30 years old. Yahshua's son Nun was 30 years old. Yahshua Messiah is 30 years old. They go into the wilderness, was there 40 years. Yahshua goes in there for 40 days. And he goes up and descends up into a high mountain. So it's blood, water, spirit, 40. So that's going down by the pattern, back up. Then now, when we did the first John 5, 7, 8, the three that bear record in heaven, Father, Word, Holy Spirit, and there's three that bear witness in the earth, spirit, water, blood. You see how it's going back down? So that's downward. Now, when you get to Yahshua the Messiah, he's going, he's, he, everything, man's down, man's dead, buried in darkness, ignorance. It takes Yahshua the Messiah to deliver man out of that. So you're going back up now, death, burial, resurrection. Uh, ascension out for a spirit or blood water spirit 40 so you see how some of these plates are going down and up now 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 the holy spirit's being poured that's going down you understand <laughs> then you got up and then you got and so we we're back here at this tent just wanted to show you that up and down just like when they you know trace your heart on a heart meter doesn't it go up and down <laughs> i hope so yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't That's tell right. you. I wouldn't be able to tell you if it didn't. Okay, That's yeah, right. No. <laughs> That's right. They call that flat line, which is flat dead. line. <laughs> <laughs> but so, even being uh, flat line doesn't mean that it's over, though, because they do have. Um, well, that uh, yeah, Yahweh can. Unless yeah. Yahweh flat line. Now, if it's a flat line done by orchestrated by Yahweh, then it's over. There you go. No. So, and this last plate, when he pours out the Holy Spirit on the uh, Gentiles, see, the Holy Spirit, so you're going, it's going, it's coming down there, and he pours the Holy Spirit on the Gentiles in Acts the 10th chapter. Then Peter, he'd, he'd been preaching the Gen, uh, Jews for seven years, and, and so he don't understand how, how these guys get the Holy Spirit, even though he just got through preaching, they received and received the Holy Spirit. Then he says, can any man forbid water? That's why you have a mention of water there. And then the 11th chapter, he has, he says, then the Holy, then remembered I. Well, really, it was the Holy Spirit brought back his remembrance. John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He said, that's what happened. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit see, uh, when he preached. And then in Acts, the 12th chapter, that's when, um, James was killed by the edge of the sword. See, 
and uh, uh, that and, and that Herod, or, you know, they killed James. That's a death. Then they took Peter and put him in prison, and it's all around the Passover. Saint, ten years after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. Then that angel delivers him out. Uh, that's a resurrection, just like the angels rolled the stone away. The, 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 those doors of the prison opened up. You understand? And he resurrected out. It's 10 years after Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection to reconfirm the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. Now, when you come to this apostasy plate, see the Roman Catholic Church, they out there still saying they changed the wine into his actual blood. You understand? And they murdered so many people. And the, they're the most murderous organization in the world. And, and so when you're practicing those carnal ordinances, you're guilty of the blood of the Messiah. He done shed the blood. He done, he done been the sacrifice. And now you want, so you can't have a feast or a supper without eating, without something being sacrificed. So they're denying the sacrifice of Yahshua. Yeah, the, and, and the blood's on their head after they're being told about these things, see? And then their water, then they're, they're, they restored water. I mean, they're doing water baptism, carnal ordinances. So it's, so just like people's, you know, well, there's a reflect in the world with, uh, well, you know how you got uh, uh, AIDS. AIDS is uh, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, but it's all ignorant demon spirits. I know that's right, Frank. Uh, Give me a high five. I know it, that's right. And oh, it, my God. I know that's right. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> That was and old. That, and that's that a terrible good. disease. You understand? <laughs> when you've got all ignorant demon spirits in you, you need some help. And so it takes the Holy Spirit to cure you from that situation. You understand? So that's that's the blood being, that's the, uh, what we call it, uh, the pollution of the blood, really. You understand? Cancer, stuff like that. That's, collusion, that's, that's pollution with the blood showing the pollution of the doctrine being taught by that satanic spirit. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we tell them the truth. Try to help them out. Give them the real blood transfusion there. But then the water's polluted. And they're out there wanting to dunk you down in the water. That doctrine's polluted. You understand? Because Yahshua Messiah fulfilled water baptism. When you do something he done already, then you're calling him a liar. And then they want to say they got the Holy Spirit. You understand? <laughs> out there lying to people. Holy Spirit don't lie. And look how many ministers out there. Pope calling himself most holy father and got you praying to Mary. Does that make any sense? Like it says in 1 Timothy 2 and 5, it says there's one Yahweh and one mediator between Yahweh and man, the man, Yahshua the Messiah. You understand? And then they they, 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 they got the Holy Trinity and then try to squeeze Mary in there. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's a false doctrine. And you see, but if you keep it the correct way, it's Yahshua's the way the truth and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. And in Isaiah 35 and 8, now that's John 14 and 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. It says the way, the truth, and the life. That means there ain't no other way. There ain't no other truth and there ain't no other life but Yahshua the Messiah. And you got to come through him to receive eternal life. And the Holy Spirit said through the Apostle Paul in 1 uh, Timothy 2 and 5, there's one Yahweh and one mediator between Yahweh and man, the man, Yahshua, the Messiah. So uh, and in Isaiah 35 and 8, it says there shall be a highway there and it shall be for the wayfaring man. It says fools shall not err therein. That means we could have been fooled all our life, but after we hear the truth and we check it out, we find out, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we, we, we did, we're not erring in this because fools cannot err therein. And it's a highway. You ain't getting no higher than this. See, before I come down to school, I was, I was getting drunk and getting high. But now I get high on the most high, party on the truth. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Get out of the most high. Yeah. 
And so the highway, Yahweh said in Isaiah uh, 57 and 15, that um, thus saith the high and lofty one, the one uh, that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy and he inhabited eternity. That's Yahweh. See, and then Yahshua said he's the way, the truth, and life. So that's the highway. You got to go through <laughs> Yahweh through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. See, and a fool cannot err therein. That's what uh, I didn't quote it right, but that's thir Isaiah 35 and 8 there. And so down here, uh, so you see how that blood, water, spirit would just lead you up to him. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't believe the true gospel, he's got a lake for you. You right. know, that's eternal damnation. And you don't want no parts of eternal. We've all had pain in our life. You understand? Uh, you know, where you know, like even if you burned yourself sometime, you know, you you, you right. did something, burned your finger, whatever. You, I remember having my hand in the the throbbing, and it's in it's in ice and in water, and I'm trying to, uh, and that's just my little finger, or that's just a right. finger. There ain't nothing like your soul getting tormented. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so that lake of fire is no joke. Doctor Kinley used to say. Uh, well, they used to say he used to he cried on his pillow on both sides, had his pillow sobbing because he saw people in the lake of fire in the school and they couldn't have no, there's nothing he could do about it. But he he but he would warn them, and that's what this lecture we was just reading about. That was his last warning with them uh, preaching the gospel at the school. Uh, why he said you don't. If you knew what the lake of fire was like, you wouldn't wish that on your worst enemy. And mm. most of us, our worst enemy, go ahead, get it. <laughs> you know, sometimes we might. And feel sometimes that way. we can be our own worst enemy. Well, uh, you know, they say. yeah, that's what the world says. And I will say this I mean, demons are what's causing you to be the worst enemy, your own worst enemy. Got you. Well, yeah, well, I'm saying like before I came before I came to class, I believe I was my own self worst enemy. Yeah, I didn't want to yeah. be, but you know what I mean. I, I was just I was worldly. I didn't want to be. Death, burial, resurrection is what brought me here. Hallelujah. That's right. That's so, right. You we know, were all I'm okay we were now. All... I mean, I'm not yeah. perfect, but at least I'm cognizant. You know what I mean? That's I'm willing right. to be obedient. I'm not that's just right. you know willy-nilly doing whatever I feel like doing. And that's the way it's supposed to be, Eric. In other words, you got to recognize, I mean, it's hard to uh, to to understand that you're dead in carnal mind. <laughs> yeah, you, but it's necessary. Yeah, yeah you ha that's right. You have to go through that process. That's what this gospel is all about, is that you're going to have to see, yep, I was dead, and I was dead. buried, and I need oh. help. I need re I need I need resurrection, which is Joshua the Messiah. He's the resurrection, the life. He's the one that raises us from the dead, sitting in our yeah. seat. That's right. That's right. Mm. That's right. You can you. So those are the two. The two. Uh, you're either going to be in the lake of fire or be in the immortal glorified body of Joshua the Messiah and have an immortal glorified body and be one of his angels, giving him thanks and praise throughout eternity. And all I got to do is believe Yahshua Messiah. Uh, as he said in that, uh, John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And mm. it does. It does free you up. You understand? Mm. Uh, you know the truth uh, for the first time in your life when uh, this divine vision revelation by the Holy Spirit teaches you. Because Yahshua Messiah is the spirit of truth. And so that's what that's all we got to offer people. And when people turn away from it, well, you just turned your back on the truth, but you think you're turning back on a person or something like that. You understand? Right. So we're glad. So help. So so you know we can't tell you. <laughs> you know we can't. Uh, uh, well, we can't. Uh, teach the whole chart i mean you know in one class if you know what i mean no no I, we, I definitely understand that yes but but that. we can take the the next part we could take the 
uh, spirit and door and run that principle all the way through. Then you can run the lampstand light all the way through. Then you can run the bread all the way through. Then you can run the intercessor all the way through. Then you get in the most holy place. You can run, you know, you can run the most holy place principles all the way through. And that's that's what Isaiah 28, 9 uh, through 11 is. It says, whom shall he teach knowledge? That's the Holy Spirit. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Be upon precept. precept. That's right. And that's what line we just upon went, line. And that's what we just did. We lined yeah. up the blood, water, spirit, and 40. We lined up the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and that's how you teach it. It was Very stammering good. lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. We're repeating these things over and over and over again. And this is the refreshing. Uh, yet they this is and uh, I'll cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. This is the Sabbath. You understand? You're you're resting in 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 his knowledge and his understanding. And when you know something, see, when you know something, you like if somebody, if you know how to count money, can you be deceived by counting money? Mm. The only way you can is if you don't pay attention. You know how many times I go to a store and I just get the change. And <laughs> right. You don't, but you got, you got, you know, you want to make sure you get the right change there. Right. So you can have knowledge, but you need to pay attention too. Right. <laughs> you know, right. we've all been tricked about things before, but uh, down here, he's. Uh, this is the truth that you always give in the world at the end of this age. So I appreciate uh, you answering my question. Thank you. And thank you, Lenore, for saying afterwards. Thank you, guys. I'm gonna sit back and chill. Thank you. Praise Joshua the Messiah. Yep. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh she might have to come back because she got this thing uh recorded, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So that, we're that still, was, yeah, so it's we're still being still recorded. Huh? It's still being recorded. Yeah. Yep. So, Thank you, Frank. Uh, that was very helpful. You're welcome. Praise Joshua the Messiah. That's what we're here for. We're here to try to help out any way we can there. See, and so there's a lot on this chart. And you see how many scriptures on here? So these are good things to study and check out, you know. And uh, and we don't we don't remember everything that's on here. I mean, that's why we keep coming back. See, Yahweh just keeps repeating these things to us. And uh you know, so that's so. And like he said in the lecture, he had this chart for about 14 years. That's a lot of there must be a lot of stuff to be preaching on this thing for 14 years. You understand this one chart here. And matter of fact, it come from a bed sheet and uh, and you read about uh, and I think he even talked about it in this lecture and said, you ain't never seen no bed sheet. Uh, last this long that was 40 some years when he was walking and it's still around today mm -hmm. and they rolled it up and down <laughs> you know going from different classes there and they had it in Springfield and he probably had it in Cincinnati because he just talked about it leaving there in 36 there but and then it was out there in LA when he went out there to LA so and so um yeah just uh this is the most beautiful thing that we got here. And uh, I hope Lenore gets, uh, I don't want her, uh, uh, we, we, she got a recording. There'll be a lot of dead air if we don't keep talking. <laughs> so uh, hopefully she gets back here soon. Uh, do you guys, uh, is there anybody else who wants to, something to go into or talk about something or whatever there? I just wanted to say that all the years I'm coming to these classes, I still appreciate you going over this in the simplicity that's in the gospel. Because yeah. sometimes we look at these things and we see all of the detail, all of the illustrations, all the scriptures, and it can be sort of overwhelming to uh, try to work with it. So I really appreciate it. That's right. And so every chart, see, if you even look at the name chart, 
we were given Lord God and Jesus. Well, we were dead and buried in that. Then we come to class. He teaches us Yahweh El and Yahshua. That's a resurrection and an ascension. <laughs> and you can receive the Holy Spirit. We didn't know Yahshua was the, we didn't know Yah the Holy Spirit had a name. It took us John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He'll teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I've said on you. Now, did did, did you, uh, were you taught all things under Jesus? We I wasn't even, taught. even taught Lord God or <laughs> Jesus or any of that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you had Adonai, didn't you? <laughs> didn't even have that raised entirely secular oh really oh my mother yeah. was uh, an orthodox jew she was raised orthodox very very restricted under the law and yeah. my dad um his uh, uh parents were both children of rabbis and they disagreed on how to observe different things yeah. and all he remembered was arguments so he was baptized. He went into the army in the Second World War and came back. And, you know, from what he had seen, he said, oh, there's no God. This, these things couldn't happen if there were. And that was his attitude, you know, was just a complete denial of there being a creator, a savior or anything. And, of course, mom was, you know, the dutiful 50s housewife trying to be June Cleaver and Julia Childs all wrapped in one. And well, then, uh, you, then you must have ate, you must have ate good. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Why do you think I'm so chunky? <laughs> Why do you think I'm a foodie now? <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to say, that's what I like, too. I love my food, boy. I like to eat, you know, I like to eat too much, really. But uh, Me too. Yahweh does have a lot of stuff out here, don't he? Oh, he provides us all these wonderful, That's tasty, right. nourishing things. That's wonderful. That's right. You know, just like the Abraham and them only knew him by El Shaddai, you know. And he's still the almighty provider. I mean, he's providing for the angels. They've been doing that since eternity there. And That's he's providing right. for all of us on the airplane, the physical things. And then he provides us this spirit, this uh, knowledge and understanding through this vision and revelation. You know? So he is the almighty provider for sure. But his name is Yahweh. His name <laughs> is Yahweh. Stuff. And we saw with COVID when he withdraws that name, you're going to die. That's no right. Breath. Matter of fact, I had a twin brother that wouldn't come to class. And he didn't want to call on Yahweh, but he got COVID and stopped calling on the name of Yahweh, and we were at his funeral. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so, you yeah. tell people the name is Yahweh, and that's the breath of life. That's right. And they still want to deny it, even though they've been breathing that from the moment they popped the womb. That's right. Matter of fact, I remember the first time I heard that, I said, we breathe his name? I thought, that was like, Wow, that's great. And I remember Oh, it's one, phenomenal to me. <laughs> and I, then I heard somebody they were in uh, she said, that's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. <laughs> we read his name. But then she finally had it revealed to her and and, and she's still in class today. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, in other words, you might not see it the first time, but boy, I was like Wow, that's amazing. His name was given at the burning bush. And then we got our lungs as a bush burner not being consumed. And we, it, we're we breathing his name. And uh, there were four characters in Hebrew. And there's four uh, uh, it, uh, spices in the altar at the, uh, in the incense, altar of incense. Uh, the incense had galbanum, frank. Statute on you, Galbanum and Frankincense. Other people know how to pronounce it better, but that's how I taught. That's how I learned it. So I just say it that way. <laughs> that's four ingredients, and that's what's in there. Nitrogen seventy some percent, oxygen's twenty three some percent, or twenty some percent, and then you got you know you got carbon in the air, <laughs> and then uh, uh, and then uh, hydrogen is aqueous vapor. So that's four remaining. 
uh, elements in the air, just like there's four ingredients in 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 Yahweh, Yod, He, Wa, He, uh, and Elohim got four letters, and Yahshua has four letters. So it, it is a uh, just, yeah, breathing His name. That was great. Oh yeah, I and mean, here I, I'm asking questions, and I'm being told that the name is too sacred to be uttered. Yeah. Yeah, that's the tradition. And then I sure. even had a, a Seventh Day Adventist tell me, well, we don't really know how to pronounce that name. Yeah, and I will say. And this I told name. her, well, if you forget how to breathe, I can accept that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it says, let everything that hath breath praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. That's mm -hmm. what Psalms 150 verse 6 says. Yeah, sure. and if you didn't, and you know, you have a King James Version, it'll say, Praise ye the Lord. You would know that that says Yah uh, uh, hallelujah there. Mm -hmm. And that and that's what the last five chapters of Psalms is. And you know, but he did say in the transcript or in that lecture that you could go down the Woolshire Boulevard and speak to all the rabbis, they'll tell you his name is Yahweh. I tell you what, I didn't have that experience. I was in Anchorage, Alaska, and I went to a rabbi. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, uh, what does what is Yah Yad Hey Wah Hey? What does that mean? What does that say? What how do you pronounce that? He said Elohim. Uh. I said, Well, then what would Le, what would Aleph Lamed Hey and Mem be? Elohim. I said, now, how can you have four different letters and it's the same thing? He refused to say the name Yahweh. He wouldn't they say go, it. They go yeah. according to the teachings, the commentaries of a rabbi named Rashi, R-A-S-H-I. It, um, it's sort of, uh, and oh, what do they call that? When they make a word out of uh, the initials or something, I can't remember the name of that when they create a new word, but it stands for Rabbi something or other, the Rashi, Rabbi Ash, whatever. Um, but he, his whole commentary, and they buy into that, was that if any uh, Jew either speaks the name or remains in the hearing of the name, they will lose their soul. They will lose their place in the afterlife because yeah. it's too sacred. Well, yeah, my book yeah. doesn't say that. Of course not. Matter of fact, that's those traditions. It's it's yeah. like uh, yeah. I think Yash, and I think uh, I I was reading those uh, steps in the Elohim book. You know, the fourteen steps there, and he'll talk about the scriptures are the original uh, inspired writings, not the traditions taught by uh -huh. the. You know, and in Matthew the fifteenth chapter. Oh, cool. I can't uh, say. Well, I know it's he, up here, yeah. in, in, in here. Yeah, Matthew, the 15th chapter, it talks about the. Uh, uh, well, I I, maybe I need mm -hmm. to call a new and take off uh, the recording. Three people. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that's Mandy speaking. Looks like it. She's oh, unmuted. Well, she did mute now. But yeah. uh, the. Uh, uh, the 15th chapter says, uh, uh, oh, let's say, uh, why do your dis disciples transgress the tradition of the elders by not washing their hands when they eat bread? Yahshua mm -hmm. Messiah said, well, why do you transgress the law of Yahweh by your, by tradition? your traditions? Uh -huh. exactly. You know, for him to say, Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain, for I'll not all guiltless to take his name in vain. Uh, for them to not use his name, that's taking it in vain. <laughs> you know. Yes, so, absolutely. It's making it empty, worthless. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, also, when you put it in context. In the law of Yahweh, yeah. In context with the scriptures, Moses is told to go give that name to the elders of Israel. He's told to give it to Pharaoh. He's told That's to preach right. the name, to declare the name, to publish the name, to extol yes. the name, to reverence the name, to praise yeah. the name. 
That's I don't right. see anywhere it says hide, conceal. <laughs> right. That's not in the Bible nowhere. Not even one verse. It's, oh, oh, wait a minute. It says my it, people it, shall it, know my name. Well, you know what? That might be beside where he has Trinity Christmas Institute. <laughs> in other words, angels. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the devil really all good in with tricking, it. Yeah. tricking yep. and fooling people, but then they're the chosen people. You know what I'm saying? Well, so we even joke among ourselves, chosen for what? Yeah, right. Right. Well, uh, we done gone an hour over now. I don't know, is Lenore back yet? No, I don't think so. She might have gone to... Uh, breakfast, lunch, whatever. I'm going to send her a, a text. Uh, maybe yeah. she's on the yeah. phone with her. Yeah, that she should uh, stop At her recording. At least shut the recording off. Yeah. 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 But uh, we love and appreciate you guys. And uh, it's good talking to you. You too, Frank. Peace and love, Joshua, everyone. Have a good weekend. Yeah, peace you and love, too. Joshua, Candace. Have fun with your stuff there. <laughs> I'm going to get going myself, but uh, I'll give her a call. Well, yeah. thank you, uh, Lucy. I'll, okay, uh, you guys have I, a wonderful day, a wonderful yeah, weekend. We got, we'll leave, too. Peace and love in Yashua. Take care. Peace now. and love in Yashua. Bye. Bye, everyone. Okay, that's good.